watching a Fox NFL special, the NFC Wild Card Game. You've got to want to make the ball club. You've got to want to be a member of the Minnesota Vikings. You've got to want to be good as an individual. But then that individualness has to turn into what you want to get accomplished as a team. We have to want to win the Central Division. We have to want to play well against the Packers and Bears and, and Detroit and against Tampa Bay. That's what we have to want to do. We have to want to be true champion, champion, champion. Whether prophetic or inspirational, last summer's address by Minnesota head coach Dennis Green lit a fire into the Vikings that has burned well into winter. A record-setting year for the offense, coupled with a defense that spent long days in Mankato Perfecting their technique did lead them to another division championship. All right, good rush, good bull rush. Good bull rush. You new people, why do you want to see some quickness? Watch this now. Go! Come on, let's have some fun. Well, the Viking defense did have fun this season. They scored a league-high seven touchdowns. Chicago coach Dave Wanstead wasn't thinking division championship when the season started. But a quick return to the playoffs is a surprise to many. Eric Kramer was hired to lead the Bears, but a switch to Steve Waltz led the resurrection to respectability. Eight wins, three losses under Waltz. It may not be the 85 model, but much sooner than anyone had the right to expect, there's a little monster growing once again in the midway. The Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota. The Chicago Bears and Minnesota Vikings. Wild card time. The Metrodome, the Hubert Humphrey Metrodome sold out. Pat Summerall here with John Madden. And first off, we'd like to wish you Happy New Year. John Warren Moon has been the subject of all conversation, his availability, his health. But Warren Moon said to us yesterday, this is the playoffs. And adrenaline has a great way of healing things once you get on the field. What's his yeah. status? Yeah, you know, I think he's wearing that brace. I think that's going to give him a little problem. I know Denny Green is talking about we have to be able to run the ball, all the adjustments. But I still think when you have Chris Carter on one side, Jake Reed on the other side, and you have Quadrius Mail in there, and Warren Moon, the pro that he is, I still think that passing is going to be a big part of this Viking game. And that may be the best bunch of receivers in the NFL. As far as the Bears are concerned, not many people give them too much of a chance to defeat the Vikings. What do you think they have to do to accomplish that task? I'll tell you, I think this guy, Dave Weinstein, has done a great job all year. And, and he said there's three battles that we have to win. He said, first of all, we have to win the special teams battle. He said, then we have to win the turnover battle. And then he said, then and we have to be close in the fourth quarter. Because if we do those three things and are close in the fourth quarter, we'll beat the Minnesota Vikings. And we shall see. You had a shot of Danny Abramowitz, who's done a heck of a job with these Bears special teams. And the Vikings will have the first crack at the ball as Kevin Butler is set to tee it up. It's been sort of a sort of a contest and a guessing game as to who will kick off, whether it'll be Gardaki or Butler. Dave wants that loves the competitiveness of this man, butthead they call him, Kevin Butler. What he doesn't love is the fact that in overtime, the last time they played the Vikings here, Kevin Butler missed a 40-yard field goal and the Vikings defeated the Bears. And one thing about being a kicker is like being a defensive back, you have to have a bad memory. You really do. But all that stuff out, it's a new day and just get in there and boom that thing. The first game ever played by the Minnesota Vikings was here at the old stadium against the Chicago Bears. Vikings were coached at that time by Norm Van Brocklin and Fran Tarkenton led them to victory. Butler's kickoff is pretty good. Robert Smith will come back with it. To about the 25. And first of all, let's look at the Viking offense led by Warren Moon. 4,264 yards, a team record this year. In front of him, Hinton, Daphne, Christie, McDaniel, and the rookie, Todd Stusey, who's done a good job. 
Terry Allen, Chris Carter, Jake Reed, Quadre Ismail, and Andrew Jordan, a promising rookie tight end. They are starting with two tight ends, maybe three. That's Steve Jordan in motion. That's Terry Allen. The Bears converge quickly. And let's look at the Bear defense. It's a 4-3. Trace Armstrong, Carl Simpson, Chris Zorich, and Alonzo Spellman. The front four. Joe Kane, the leading tackler. Dante Jones and Vincent Smith, the linebackers. Secondary, Donnell Wolford, Jeremy Lincoln, the cornerbacks. Carrier and Gale, the two safeties. Second and nine. Steve Jordan, they called him back out of retort to retirement. He had had so many great years. He's an engineer. He was, he was getting ready. He was going to go uh, on a trip to Africa the next day. They called him and said, I think we're going to use you. He said, well, you better not think too long because I'm going to Africa. And they said, okay, we need you. We want you. So Steve Jordan said, I'll take that trip to Africa next year. Amp Lee is in the backfield for the Vikings. It's third and four. Moon retreats okay. But the pass is not okay. Chris Carter and a flag on the play. Chris Carter, the intended receiver. And that was a late flag, though. Chris Carter started to complain. Warren Moon tried to really force it into Carter because there was about three bear defenders there. Red Cashin is the referee and that'll be a first down for the Vikings Dave Wanstead has done a heck of a Holding job number 26 by the defense five yards first down John Mangum there's John Mangum right there number 26 you're going to see that if if there is a go-to guy on this team it's this guy Chris Carter you see Mangum held him right there and then Carter just kind of stopped and Warren Moon could have thrown that ball to draw draw the foul. Two tight ends, Terry Allen deep. <laughs> Allen he said he likes to run to his left, but he's very adept at finding the hole. There's an amazing story, you guys. Isn't it? Yeah, late round draft choice comes in, gains over a thousand yards, has a knee operation reconstructive surgery comes back then gets another knee injury another reconstructive surgery another comeback and gained over a thousand yards this year amazing and he says he's more than all the way back he's better than he ever was he said the thing to feel best about him right now are his knees that is amazing Terry Allen he's not going to get the first just shy of the 45-yard line of the Minnesota Vikings, Dante Jones made the stop. You know, and even with the year Terry Allen had, and then, you know, Scotty Graham can come in and give this team a little running life, too. But even with that, the, the Vikings have had to pass or pass the ball more with Warren Moon than they really wanted to. I know Denny Green and Warren Moon would, would all like to be able to run better and run more. That's Amp Lee who comes in on passing downs, so look for Warren Moon to retreat. He gets it out to his tight end, Andrew Jordan, the rookie who is developing rapidly into a fine tight end. Yeah, they brought Amp Lee in, and he comes in, and he blocks Alonzo Spell. Watch this. Here's Amp Lee. Moon's going to come to this side a little, but Lee takes Alonzo Spellman and just knocks him down right there so that they can slide their protection to the right. You watch Amp Lee. Boom! He just takes Spellman down. They slide a little to the right, and that's the side that Warren Moon throws the ball to. Scotty Graham now on first and ten as the deep back. Two tight ends for Warren Moon and the Vikings. And a timeout for Warren Moon and the Vikings. Very impressive individual, Warren Moon. We spent time with him yesterday. Quality time. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. 
The Viking drive started at their own 27-yard line. First and ten, three runs, two passes. Blue Flicker coming if Moon has time. Moon's hit from behind, gets the ball off. Knocked down, intended for Jake Reed. Mark Carrier back there with it. You know, that was a, a bad pass back on the flea flicker, and that made Warren Moon have to catch the ball, adjust the ball. Trace Armstrong coming around from that backside made Warren Moon flush a little, but he doesn't want to flush a right or left. I think it's easier on his knee if he's going to be flush to be flushed straight up the middle and throw as he's being flushed. But I think that was a bad uh, a flicker from the flea flicker. And Jake Green never flickered into the open. Good coverage by the Bears. Who now shows corner blitz. Scotty Graham is hit by the blitzing man. I believe it's Terry Allen, not Scotty Graham. Sean Gale came firing up. It was Terry Allen. It was, there was a good hit right in this area right here when they tried to go to that side. Like you say, when you bring the safety, there's Sean Gale right there. He took on Big Daphne, who weighs about 350 pounds. Little Sean Gale, that was a collision. When you can bring up a safety and take on a 350-pound guard like that, then you can stop anyone's run. John Jarek replaces Daphne at right guard. He's wearing number 46, a guard. You won't see that very often. Here's Moon. Dave Wanstead said he was going to tell him that because he thinks that Jarek has to report when he does that. On every play. I don't know if he has to Before report on every play or snapped. not. Ball start. Number 78 on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Red Cashin, Chris Hinton is the man who jumped early. There you see John Jurek right there. He's number 46. Was a guard. They moved him to a tight end. Now he'll come back and play guard sometimes. In fact, they like to get him in there for Bernard Daphne on passing situations because he's a more mobile pass protector. Amp Lee in the backfield. Rarely do the Vikings show you the same group of people. Spellman chases Moon out of the pocket. Moon's going to take off, and he won't do that too often. And that's what he didn't want to do. When we talked to him yesterday, that was the one thing he was worried about. Not moving around, not getting hit in the pocket, but getting flushed out. And look at this. It's a three-man line. There's only three Bears rushing. You see, and they get a, a pretty good rush. They get a little pressure right there from the backside, but it's good coverage. They have eight men in coverage, no one open, and they force Warren Moon to do that. Just before he went down, he almost lost yeah. the ball. Look at that. He was up there trying to keep it up there to throw it. Saxon back to punt it off the side of his foot. Fair catch by Jeff Graham made at the 12. And so the Bears take over with their first offensive possession. 9.28 left in the first. Nothing, nothing. The Bears, the Vikings meeting for the third time this year. Steve Walsh. The Bear quarterback wears number four. Across the line from him and playing a game of the eyes throughout the afternoon will be Jack Del Rio. Of course, they know each other well. They yeah. played together when uh, both of them were with the Dallas Cowboys. Right. Raymond Harris and Lewis Tillman behind Walsh. Walsh going to throw it on first down. Flag on the play. Incomplete pass. Walsh through high. Before the snap. Ball start. Right guard number 58. No play. Five yards. Still first down. The Bear offense. Quarterback by Steve Walsh, who comes from nearby St. Paul. In front of him, Andy Heck, Todd Perry, Fontenot, Lewenberg, and James Williams. Big James Williams, the big cat. Tillman, Harris, Conway, Graham, and Cook. Those who will catch the ball and run with it. Walsh to Tillman. Fumble. And the Vikings, I believe, have it. The battle of turnovers. Swings early to the Vikings. 
That happened the last time they played, too. The, the Vikings got that first turnover and early turnover. Again, it's tough to run. They're running in there. They'll lead in the middle. There's always someone that's going to be right there. Ed McDaniel, yep. the linebacker, number 58, hit the ball with his right shoulder. Boom. Watch yep. McDaniel. 58 is coming in there. Watch the right shoulder on the right shoulder of Tillman. That was the ball. That was a hand he had the ball in. And crap, it just came right out of there. And Henry Thomas made the recovery. First and goal, Vikings at the six. Terry Allen is the running back. Two tight ends, three tight ends. One of them goes in motion. Allen. Okay, okay. A yard, maybe. Chris Zorich filled the middle. Hey, the Bears do this well. They play, they play this defense down here inside the inside the ten yard line. They are tough. They're tough to run against. Among the toughest. Little Zorich there, you look at him, uh, tackle his motor goes about 125 miles an hour all the time. Not just on the playing field. Uh, it's guys like him that you just love to watch play, that still have fun playing this game. Four wide receivers for the Vikings this time. Terry Allen is the back. Moon gets to Allen. Allen gets into the end zone, but there's a penalty marker down. That was one of the things the Vikings wanted to do is run from a passing formation. They did it. They did it successfully, but they had a holding penalty. But Denny Green was talking about show the passing formation. Four wide receivers. Spread them out. Spread them out and then hit them inside. Holding. Number 62 on the offense. Ten yards. He'll suck it out. Called against the center, Jeff Christie. That's right where they ran. Yep, here's Jeff Christie right there. As you say, they're in an even defense. He's not covered. He just blocks back. It looks like he may have just reached an arm out there, but that happened so quickly, it's tough to tell. May have. There's yep. the arm. Yep. You see that arm go out there and the tackle, and that was part of the success of the run. Second down at the 21. Moon to throw it. Carter. Out of bounds, short gain. Covered by John Mangum. That's one of the things that the, the Vikings, we know they're going to have to run and do all that. But the other thing that they have to do is get the ball to Chris Carter. You talk about a deal, huh? Bargain. <laughs> Just for what a deal. <laughs> they got him for the waiver prices of $100 for the Philadelphia Eagles. And this year he caught 122 passes. An all-time record. And he gives a lot of that credit to Warren Moon becoming a Minnesota Viking in the offseason. Amp Lee behind Moon this time. Four wide receivers. Three on the right side. Now as Carter was the man in motion. Incomplete. Jake Reed. Who seems to be following him in the mold of what's going on around the league now. And big receiver yeah and that's what they try and do and that's what they tried to do right there and it almost worked you know get that big receiver on the smaller defensive back throw the ball up high and let him have that jump ball and he jumped up and got one hand on the ball and couldn't hold on to it Juan Reves then the Vikings can't get in Reves from 30 yards out he's hit 28 field goals in a row that's number 29, but the 28, the record, are only for the regular season. And this, of course, is the playoffs, the wild card. And hey, that was some game, though, that uh, that Green Bay Detroit, where they could hold Barry Sanders to know you. I don't. I, I didn't think that could ever be I done. I didn't either. That 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 in itself is something that. I don't know how they did it. I no. really don't. And then, and then later watching a, a Dan Marino and a Joe Montana, two of the greatest quarterbacks ever. A classic. That's how you pass the football. Ravage kickoff to Nate Lewis at the six. To the 34. For a McDonald's game break, let's send you now to our Hollywood studio. 
All right, Pat, as you indicated, the Browns advance to the next round of the playoffs, utilizing a balanced attack. The go-ahead touchdown right here in the third. Leroy Horde rumbling to the end zone, and Cleveland eliminates New England. Up next for the Browns, the Steelers. Back to the Metrodome, Pat and John. First and ten, the Bears at their own 34. Three wide receivers, their second possession of the day. Steve Walsh, still the quarterback. Walsh, pass caught by Jeff Graham as the Bears move into Viking territory just across midfield. You know, and Steve Walsh knew last night that he was going to have to throw the ball because if you don't throw the ball and get it upfield against this Viking defense, then they're going to give you that eight-man front. And talking to Steve Walsh, it was kind of refreshing to talk to him. He said, he was saying how refreshing it is to be back in the game and have a chance to win a game. He said he forgot how much fun it was to play and start. Lewis Tillman, the ball carrier, didn't get much. The Vikings on defense, of course, always among the best. Up front, the front four, led by those two tackles, John Randall and him and Henry Thomas. Robert Harris and James Harris, the defensive ends, the linebackers McDaniel Del Rio in the middle, and Carlos Jenkins. And the secondary rookie Dwayne Washington, Vincey Glenn, Todd Scott, and Anthony Parker. Second and ten. Three wide receivers for the Bears. Raymond Harris is the lone back. Walsh. is intercepted by the Vikings. Anthony Parker came out of the pile with the ball. Walsh is down but not hurt. Parker down with the rebound and the Vikings get their second turnover. And what an interception by Anthony Parker. He had to to get to that ball. He had to run over the umpire. Watch him. You're going to see the umpire right here. He's going to be in the way. The ball bounces up. Parker has to get by the bear, by the umpire, and beat Jeff Graham for that jump ball. The umpire lost his hat. But, more importantly, the Vikings got the ball at the bear 40. Just inside the 40. Their second turnover, first and 10 at the Chicago 39, call it. And Scotty Graham is the running back. Ismail was the move man and is, was, is again. Moon, the Carter. One-handed reception by Chris Carter, but he's out of bounds. You know, that, that pass by Steve Walsh, but you're going to watch it. It's, it's, it's going to hit Jay Lewenberg in the back of the head. And that's Walsh's problem. He has to get the ball up in the air. He just threw that thing down. It hit his left guard, or his right guard, right in the helmet. In the back of the helmet, bounced up in the air, and there was Parker going through an umpire and a player to get the ball. That ball looked like it almost stuck to Steve Walsh's hand. Yeah, but yeah, it was. he went to release it up there, and it didn't, didn't release come out. where he wanted to, and it came right down. And that's his responsibility. I mean, he has to find a lane to throw the ball in. Second and ten, and Lee out of the backfield. And Lee flag on the play. A penalty marker down. Lee got almost enough for the first down. That was interesting. Holding. Bears. Uh, Vikings. Excuse and me. Talking, and talking to the Bears, Dave wants that, that they had to win the turnover battle. They've lost that battle, but... They've been lucky here in getting the penalties. Remember the last time? Holding number 78 on the offense. 10 yards. Still second out. Call against Chris Hinton. Remember last time they got a turnover. They got down there. They scored a touchdown. They had a holding penalty. And that brought it out. They get a turnover now. And then they get another holding penalty. First one was against Jeff Christie, the center. And that one again was a right tackle. Chris Hinton. Second down. At about 15, 14, perhaps. Moon incomplete. Nothing there. Ismail, the intended receiver. I think Warren Moon is taking that shorter drop and that quicker release, trying to throw the ball to the inside, and the Bears are, are defending that inside. I think that 
Warren Moon in the passing game is going to have to get the ball back outside to and outside the numbers between the numbers and the sidelines. Moon looks a little tentative. Yeah, he does. He, well, you know, he was saying before in the pregame warm-up that that heavy brace on his left knee, he has a hard time balanced because his left leg becomes so much heavier than the right. And now the Vikings use something they haven't used in a while, a shotgun formation. Moon is sacked around the corner by Trace Armstrong. And the Vikings go backward. Yep, that's one thing about that. That just makes you standing in. Here they are again. They're look, if you look, they're just in a three-man line again. Here's Trace Armstrong. He's going to go right around a Chris Hinton. That's the second time they've used this and gotten pressure from just a three-man rush. Here, Trace Armstrong was just man-to-man -man on Hinton, and he just manhandled him. You turn the ball over twice and come out of it just giving up three points. You got to consider yourself in pretty good shape. Saxon's punt goes out of bounds at the 20, where the Bears will take over first and 10 from that point. Still in the first quarter at the Metrodome, three nothing. The Vikings lead. Penalties. They've gotten the two two, two turnovers, but only got three points as a result. I yeah. tell you, you know, after those turnovers, they've had seven plays, and with those seven plays, they had like minus 17 yards. Yep. So, so part of it has been good bear defense. The other part of it has been penalties by the Vikings. And of course, Chris Hinton didn't do very well. No. Was, one of those penalties was against Chris Hinton for holding, and then he was beaten by Trace Armstrong for the stop. Right. First and ten. Walsh gives to Raymond Harris. And Harris got maybe a yard. And there's all kind of dragging and pulling going on by the Viking defense. They've done their job. Yeah, it's 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 tough to run against them. I mean, when you have that middle, when you have Henry Thomas in, in there in the middle, you know, and he has that cockeyed nose. There's Tony Dungy, the defensive coordinator of this defense. And he puts Henry Thomas in there in that cockeyed nose. Then you have John Randall. And right behind him, you have Jack Del Rio. They are tough to run in there. Here's Wall, screen pass. Tillman to about the 30. That's close to a first down. Carlos Jenkins and Henry Thomas involved in the stop. Yeah, that's the other thing that those tackles do is, is, is they aren't the biggest guys, but they're very quick and they run well. If you see number 97, Henry Thomas yeah. there, he chased that thing down. And he was flying across the field, and he looks like a linebacker. I mean, that's part of it. He's lined up here. See 97 in the middle? He sees screen. He runs right down the line. Then he's taking a point where the guy's going to go and gets in and makes that tackle. He that's is, hustling. He is quick. He ate breakfast in a hurry yesterday. That's playoff intensity. That's Harris. Hammered it across the 30. I think he got the first down. But not much to spare. Well, if you're going to if you're going to work that middle, you're going to have to hammer it. Like you said, you aren't going to finesse that middle. You're not going to trick them, and you're not going to get any easy yards in there. Anything you're going to get is going to be hard work and hammering. <laughs> Good, yeah, Jack. That's <laughs> very tiring, too. Yeah, old hammering, old hammering hard work in there. You got hammering Hank Thomas in there, Jack Del Rio, John Randall going to Pro Bowl. What the heck are you talking about? First down, Bears. Walsh back to throw it. If he has time, Walsh sidearm to Harris to the 35. Henry Thomas put the heat on Walsh. And you see what Henry Thomas did, the way he got in on that tackle, he dropped out on his own. Yep. Here's an interesting thing that they do is he'll start here like he's going to rush. Then he start and then he comes back and they run a, a zone out of it. You see, then they can blitz it. So he starts like he's going to rush. You see him right here in the middle? And then he's going to get in there right here, and he's going to make the tackle. That's the old nose tackle yeah. playing pass defense in a zone and reacting. Second down at six. Okay. Harris straight ahead for two or three. One of the things uh, Dave Wanstead said when we were talking with him yesterday was, the thing I think, the thing I think we do best is we run it. 
and we keep on running it whether we gain anything or not yeah that's that's a big thing and i think that's one of the things the vikings would like to be able to do is is not get away from your run i think say you know over the years i think the cowboys may be having some of that problem where the run doesn't work so you just don't go back to it but the bears do they stay with it they just keep doing it all day third down pass complete to curtis conway Gets across midfield into Viking territory. First down, Bears. The Jack Del Rio just got him. Watch Jack Del Rio here. He he ends up chases, uh, chasing Conway. He's just zoning. You see, he's going to see him right here. And then he just dives and just right there gets one ankle. <laughs> that was enough to make that tackle. If he doesn't dive and make that, it's about 10 more yards. Nope. Jack Del Rio let out all his hose on that one. Yep. Two tight ends set up for the Bears. First and ten at the Viking, just across the Viking side of the field. That's Harris straight ahead. About six. Ben C. Glenn up to make the stop. There's a guy that Dave Wanstad is impressed with is that Raymond Harris. Who, he's a rookie that is, is has been like a tailback. He said, but he's really going to be a good fullback. Might be a penalty here against the Vikings for a face mask violation in addition to the game. Face mask, number 25 on the defense, five yards, first down. Vincey Glenn, first down, Minnesota, Chicago Bears. You see right here at the end, you see Vincey Glenn's going to come in, and he gets that left hand right there in the yep. face mask. You see Raymond Harris's head is going straight, then it takes an oblique turn to the left. Three wide receivers for the Bears. Harris, the lone back. Reverse coming. Jack Graham try to get around the corner. Got a couple of yards. Ed McDaniel read it. You know, I think when you talk about playoff intensity, everyone says, you know, you get into yep. playoffs and the level of intensity rises. I think this is where you see it. You see it on defense. You see it on pursuit. You see it on second effort. You see it on guys diving and grabbing ankles. And we've just seen about three or four examples of playoff intensity in these last couple of plays. It does increase a level, no question about it. Second down. Walsh. Got a man open. Out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. I'm not sure. Flag on the play. I don't know. They're throwing everything down yeah. there, Pat. They're throwing hats and flags and shaking heads. I don't think they know if Tom Waddle was in or not. I think he stepped out of bounds and then came back in. Yeah. If he does that, then then then, then he can't be the first guy to touch the ball. And and the fact that they have their hats off, that's what it is. Here's Tom Waddle. He's number 87. There is no infraction on the play. Incomplete pass. Caught out of bounds. Third down. He didn't go out of bounds and come back. No, in. he didn't. So, so the officials should have kept their hats on. But he catches right. it when he comes down. His right foot is yeah. on the out of bounds. Yeah, right, stripe. right. So that's just an out of bounds pass. So that part of it is right. Yeah. But they should have just kept their hats on their heads because he never did go out of bounds and come back right. in. Third and seven, Robert Green into the offensive setup. Waddle comes wide right this time. Three wide receivers for the Bears. Walsh back to throw it. Here comes pressure. He completes the pass anyway, and he gets enough for a first down. Walsh backpedaling. Got rid of it to Curtis Conway, and Conway got the first. Uh, and he was getting that pressure from that backside, and he's lucky. Watch this. The pressure's coming here, and how Walsh felt that, I have no idea. What they did is they put John Randall out there, normally plays tackle. They played him at the end against Andy Heck, and he just ran right by Andy Heck. Watch how fast John Randall is. Whew. Was Walsh lucky to get rid of that one? And that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Minnesota three, the Bears nothing. Back at the Metrodome, the wild card match between the Bears and the Vikings, their third 
meeting of the year. Pat Summerall with John Madden, three nothing Minnesota. But the Bears on the move, first and ten at the Minnesota 27. Steve Walsh gives to Lewis Tillman, close to the 20. Stopped by Barker in the first quarter. The turnovers, two nothing. The points off a turnover is not that significant. Three. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the important thing. I mean, the one that you get the turnovers and two, what you do with them. The Vikings got them and only got three points out of that. Again, pretty good fair defense, but also some penalties by the Vikings. Walsh would appear to be changing his play at the line. Gives to Harris. I can see why Dave wants that likes this guy so much six feet 225 but seems to have a very good feel yeah and here's what it looks like from overhead here he is right here and if you were right on top of like if you were sitting up in the roof this is what it would look like you see he starts in the middle then he sees Andy Heck his left tackle bring his guy down and he finds a hole to that back side wonder how much those tickets are up there no one would go up there they're free that's a good vantage point Walsh, Harris again pounds down to about the 12-yard line of Minnesota. But he has a good feel, you know. You know, like uh, Emmett Emmett Smith. I'm not saying that Raymond Harris is Emmett Smith, but that thing where you just where you run what you call pick a hole. You know, you just hand them the ball and they start one direction and then they just pick a hole anywhere around the line of scrimmage. Some runners have that ability. Yeah, some guys are slashers yep. and straight ahead guys like Lewis Tillman, for example, is a slasher. He's going to go in one direction. Some guys are pick a hole guys. Harris is a pick a hole guy. And a big pick a hole guy. Here's Walsh. Gets it to Raymond Harris. First and goal at about the three. Just outside the three. And Raymond Harris doesn't watch out. He's going to be rookie of the of, of the year on this drive. As we saw him run, here he is right here. He's going to be a pass receiver. Just comes out of the backfield, stops, runs that delay, tries to get underneath the linebacker. Ed McDaniel, who had made a big hit earlier, made a big miss there. First and goal at the four. Tillman. To the one. Stopped by Jack Del Rio. Hey, they're having good mixture down here. They've been running one back, then they run, they get in here and they run two backs. They have, have the guard pulling through a good lead there. Tillman again, the slasher, just going to point in one direction and go and hit that hole. At the one, second down. Touchdown. The Bears take the lead. Good, good lead that time. They take a defensive lineman, Jim Flanagan, number 68, and they put him in the in the backfield. Watch, here's big old Flanagan. He's a, he's a backup defensive lineman. He's going to lead, and then Tillman just follows him in there. You get number 68, the defensive lineman. Boom, he takes on a guy right there. Tillman cuts to the inside and just gets the ball across. Butler for the extra points. 16 plays, 80 yards for the Bears in that drive. Butler's extra point is good, and the Bears lead it 7-3. 11-46 left to play in the first half in Minnesota. Don Adams and Barbara Feldon are back as agents 86 and 99. This time they've got a son who's a great big zero. He's got his mother's eyes and his father's job. So get ready for an all new episode of Get Smart. Catch the series premiere next Sunday at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on Fox. Don Adams is back. I'll be doggone. <laughs> I'll be horn swoggle. <laughs> I didn't know that. No, they were coming back. Glad to hear it. Kickoff sails down to Robert Smith, who starts from the nine and got some room. Smith.
chased by Butler, knocked out of bounds by the kicker, Kevin Butler. But not before he gets to the Bears' 33-yard line. That's one of the things Dennis Green says. They have to take up the slack. It can't all be Warren Moon. Their defense has to do part of it, and their kicking game has to do part. He starts up with the wedge. The wedge makes the first block for him. Then he leaves his wedge after he gets his block, finds that hole to the outside, up that sideline, and there was only one guy there, and he made the play, and that was a kicker, Kevin Butler. Scotty Graham behind Warren Moon. Jarek lines up now as the tight end on the right side. He was a guard. Now he's a tight end. Graham, the ball carrier, leans in for a couple. Chris Zorich on the stop. You know, when you have, you know, sometimes we forget these special teams. You know, you talk about the quarterback has to do this and the offense has to do this, but if special teams give you field position like this, I guarantee it's a heck of a lot easier for the offense. What do they say? The special teams are on the field about 15% of the time? Well, they're on the field a, a big percent yeah. of the time, and they're involved in a big percent of the plays. And a big percent of the results of the contest. Second down. Moon gives again to Graham. Not much. Gets inside the Bear 30 to about the 29. Couple of yards. Carl Simpson made the stop. You know, any, every time you look at a tag, we're talking about intensity, and it's, and it's the Bears and the Vikings defense, too. But when they run, everyone is there. You get, you know, I mean, they always talk about pursue and gang tackle. And I think that's what you see in playoffs. That's you one see, of the big yeah, differences. Real pursuit and real gang tackle. And on that last play, all 11 Chicago Bears defensive players were in at or around the tackle. Third and six. And Lee joins Moon in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the left. Moon has time. Incomplete pass is intercepted by Barry Minter. And again. The Vikings do not, cannot take advantage of good field position. This time is a kickoff return. A break is going on down the field. Yeah, that was with Chris Hinton. And Spellman. Yeah, Alonzo Spellman and knocks Chris Hinton down about 20 yards downfield. You see Minter, he's the middle linebacker on nickel. Moon looks him off first. Minter went to the right. Then he picks up his guy, comes across to the left, right out of his hands, and Minner picks it off. So the Bears take over. Chicago Bears 7, Minnesota 3 in the NFC wild card game. The Vikings have had the opportunities, but unable to capitalize. Rodri Ismail has just dropped that pass and went right through his hands that, that Minner intercepted. John Randall jumped. Randall does a lot of things. Yeah, you know, he'll he'll encroachment by the defense, number 93, five yards, still first down. Let's just watch that interception again. Here's Barry Minner here. He's a middle linebacker. We're gonna see Quadri Ismail as he comes across right in there. He looks like he trips a little. You see right there, and that just took him off balance but he still should catch that ball. I think he saw Maurice Douglas coming across, and then the ball went through his hands right into Minter. Walsh to throw it. Going deep for Chip Graham, and Graham has it. Still on his feet, still fighting as Graham down to the 14, 13-yard line. Walsh to Graham, stopped finally by Vincey Glenn. Sometimes I think they get mesmerized by a guy like Walsh who throws those short passes. I don't think he can or does go deep. It looks like Dwayne Washington just lost Graham. You're going to see here, he gets the ball up there. Graham is going to be all by himself. Jeff Graham, he's behind Dwayne Washington. There's Dwayne Washington, number 20 there. Watch Washington here. He looks like after that, he squats a yep. little right there because that's where they expect him to throw. When he squatted, Jeff Graham ran right by him. On first down, it's Harris for a couple down to about the 13. Ed McDaniel on the stop. 
I think you you know you you think of Steve Walsh you think that short passing game the quick stuff and everything and I think the corners start to think that they think that all the patterns are going to be short so they start squatting at around 10 or 12 yards that's what Dwayne Washington did he squatted at about 12 yards and Graham ran right by him while he was still squatting that's Lewis Tillman Tillman inside the 10 to about the 9 Del Rio on the stop yeah, if you look at, at the way Steve Walsh passes if you look at in front of the linebackers he's five for six behind the linebackers but in front of the defensive backs he hasn't thrown any yet and then look at this two for three he's thrown deep so you don't expect him you expect that short stuff in front of the linebackers but you don't expect that two for three deep in the first half third and five Conway was the man in motion Walsh rolls right fires touchdown Bears Keith Jennings from West. Hey, the Bears have this Minnesota Viking defense on their heels now. That was a heck of a drive. Mix up a little run. They got some running game going, throwing deep. Here they're going to cross their backs and hit their tight end. You see the back goes this way. The other back goes the other way. Steve Walsh does what we call a bootleg, and he finds Keith Jennings in the end zone. Jennings almost lost it and regained possession. Just about waist high. Butler's extra point is good, and it's the Bears 14, Minnesota 3. They turn it around in a hurry as you look again at Walsh's touchdown pass. Let's watch the, the bootleg again. Here's Steve Walsh. He fakes here. Then he's going to bootleg here. This back sneaks across. Here's Keith Jennings. He comes across this way. Here's Walsh throwing here, and he hits Jennings in the end zone. But this is a pretty good cover. See, they get across, across, a guard pull, a lot of action happening, and then number 85 just sneaks across the field into the end zone. Kevin Butler set to kick off for the Bears. Robert Smith at the eight. Bears down in good shape this time. That's good coverage. Smith down at about the 17-yard line by Myron Baker. Hey, the, 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 the Bears do that well. And this has been a good special teams game here, but, but the Bears are a good cover team. And when you have a guy like Danny Abramowitz, mm -hmm. you know, and he's your special teams coach. You know that you're going to have a fired up bunch of guys. Danny Abramowitz was out here yesterday. He was fired up. He was ready to play yesterday. And they were out in their street clothes. And he hasn't played in years. And I said, Danny, you got to put helmets on. You can't play like this. Come on. By Moon on the exchange and the scramble for it belongs to the Vikings. What happened to the umpire's hat? He fumbled it. Oh, how did he get his hat knocked off? He didn't even put it on. No, it's not very securely located now. The, here, the, the, the Vikings are, are just out of sync. Yeah. And, then, and then Warren Moon and not practicing. Here, you see what happened there? He had his right hand up, but he didn't get his left hand up to take the ball. The ball was slapped on his right hand, and his left hand didn't get up there. Moon to throw it. Chris Carter. Carter didn't quite get the first down, about a half yard short. Right now, for McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. All right, Pat, a tough day for New England's Drew Bledsoe. He threw four picks in the first meeting with the Browns. Three today, this one by Eric Turner, leading to a Cleveland field goal as the Patriots are knocked out of the playoffs 2013 by the Browns. Back to Minneapolis, Pat and John. Back at the Metrodome, third and short. The Bears leading Minnesota 14 to three in the second quarter. Third and short, Moon's gonna throw it. Outside, the lunge by Terry Allen, I believe got the first down. Daniel Wolford and Joe Kane up to make the hit. Well, it was not, I don't know how Terry Allen can run a pattern of that short but 
They had less than a yard, and he ran his pattern of less than a yard. I mean, the thing you're doing, if you're going to be the back and you're coming out here, you have to pick up that yard before the ball's thrown. Terry Allen really didn't pick up that yard until after he caught the ball. If he doesn't break the tackle, he doesn't make it. Oh, that ball was thrown for none yardage. First to 10, Minnesota. The handoff is to Terry Allen. This time he got almost another first down if he didn't get it. Kane again on the stop. Yeah, the, the, the Vikings pulled their tight end, Andrew Jordan, as a lead blocker. You know, in that counter type thing, we're yeah. seeing more and more of that. It used to be the tackle pulling, and now they're pulling their tight end more to lead that play. So many people were catching it from the backside. And if they have to keep that tackle back there to seal that backside. They measure for the first down, which Terry Allen got. But you're going to see Jordan is going to be the end here, and he's going to lead to this side. You see him come across? He leads number 89 and just leads right up there and makes the hole for Terry Allen. You see, that used to be that tackle doing that, yep. and now it's the tight end or H-back. That was when the Redskins ran it with Riggins and Jacoby and group so well. Terry Allen again. Sean Gale made the stop. Watch this and listen. Now, our Aflac trivia question to you. What ex-New Orleans receiver is highlighted in this NFL blooper? Holding his head right there is... I know the guy that threw the pass. The guy that threw the pass was Archie Manning. That much is right. But who was the receiver? It hit our camera. Allen, right side. I don't, I'm not sure who he was, but I think he's here today. And he's a tough guy. <laughs> and a good coach. And he caught a heck of a lot of passes. There's Archie, Archie Manning. Manning. The receiver. The hit. The name. <laughs> Ex-New Orleans receiver. Current Bears special teams coach, Danny Abramowitz. <laughs> there he is. No looks, glass in his head. He looks like he's still wondering where that camera came from. Boom! Gets it to Chris Carter, who breaks one tackle, breaks another, breaks another. Finally is tripped up by John Mangum after he gets a Viking first down. Yeah, oh, very close to it. I think he got it. I think this is the thing that the that the Vikings have to start doing now is get the ball to Chris Carter. And it's, a, and it's his third catch. They started the first quarter. I think he had one catch for three yards. And they got him a couple here because he's their go-to guy. Like I said, he caught 122 passes this year. The guy's a phenomenal receiver, phenomenal shape, does those crosses, those underneath stuff. And he has to be a big part of this offense today. And he will be if they just get the ball in that direction. Here's Moon looking the other way. Jake Reed, just out of his reach. Oh, they had him there. That's that old college thing, the roll, where they roll and throw back. You don't see Warren Moon doing a lot of this. Of course, he did at Houston, but he's going to roll right. He's going to roll out here, a little roll here. Then he's going to throw back all the way across the field to Jake Reed. So what the roll does, here you try and get the movement here, get the secondary to flow to the left. Get that safety out of there so you can create one-on-one -on -one back on this side. He had exactly what he wanted and just overthrew just Jake Just a Reed. little too much arm. Second down and long. Second and 10 amp. Lee in the backfield for Minnesota. And Moon back to throw it again. Good protection. Pass is caught by Ismail. A gain of only a couple of yards. That's the type of thing he was trying to get the ball deeper. There was nothing open there, and Ismail was like his third receiver, and he was he was so short that he didn't get anything there. Robert Smith comes in. John Jurek goes in at right guard. This is an interesting thing where you have a number 46 come in at guard for pass protection purposes. Don't think I've ever seen that before. No, I've never seen take a guard out on third down just to pass protect. That has to be tough for Jurek, though. 
Robert Smith is in the backfield. Flag on the play. The Bears jump. Moon finally gets it and throws it out of bounds. Well, Moon picked up five yards. That's going to be a lot easier third down for him because I think this penalty is going to be against the Bears. Good quarterbacks will come up with hard counts on third down. It's against the Bears. Right. See, so now instead of having that third and long. Side. Number 93 on the defense. Five yards, still third down. Trace Armstrong, who got the sack earlier. Now here's Trace Armstrong right here. And you're going to see he's pointing in, looking at the ball. The ball didn't move, but he also was listening, and he heard that, that hard count that Warren Moon gave. I think he got a couple of them there. He did. Two of the Bears jumped. Third down. And four. Amply in the backfield. Ismail and Moon. Moon incomplete. Intended for Jake Reed. John Mangum. Jeremy Lincoln. The two defenders for the Bears. And these Viking fans were fired up earlier, and now they're starting to boo. I don't know. I think I think 14 to 3, and just at the end of the first half, I think that's a little premature. They yep. still got some playing to do here. Mike Saxon back to punt for Minnesota. Jeff Graham deep for the Bears. Saxon lines it. Graham signaled fair catch and made it ran out of bounds at about the 10 and a half yard line where the Bears will take over. They lead it 14 to 3. The NFC wild card game the Bears 14 Minnesota 3. Bears ball at their own 10. Yeah the Bears worked uh, all this week or a couple of days with noise in the background practice with it and here they need it. Walt. No gain on the handoff. To Lewis Tillman. You know what they do? They they practice and they pump noise and music and stuff into the practice and it makes everyone concentrate. Steve Wall said he, he thinks that it helped and some of the the bear players used earplug. Uh huh. And uh, they didn't know if they were going to wear them. I don't know if they're wearing them today, but they practiced with them during the week. Would be the offensive lineman if they're wearing them. Two minutes left to play in the first half. Yeah, guys, they talked about using these earplugs this week. They practiced with them. They thought they really didn't make much of a difference. They're, desi they're designed to take away the high-frequency noises. But they said the best thing to do with these things is throw them away, score some points, and take them right out of the game. So far, they've got that done. John? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Matt jettisoned the earplugs. Yeah, they just threw them away, he says. <laughs> They look like they'd hurt anyway. You know, one good thing, when, when we have sideline reporters, Pat, we yeah. have heavy jumbo. I mean, we don't go with, <laughs> with anything little. And we come here to Minnesota, and one thing, when Anthony Munoz on this side and Matt Millen the over the, on the <laughs> other side, this field, I will guarantee you, will not tilt today. Well, we're not doing too bad in the booth either, you know. <laughs> well, we won't, won't tilt the booth either, but nothing's going to tilt. Everything will stay on its axis here. Steve Walsh back to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for Curtis Conway. There's Anthony Munoz. That's heavy, Joe. That's our big package. Yeah, yeah, that's heavy there. <laughs> He's heavy, and the other guy's jumbo. Or they can change places, too. And, 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 and you mean the other guy be heavy and he be <laughs> yeah. jumbo? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, you're talking about two football players, though, huh? And oh, boy. Guy. When Matt Millen was fun to watch play, and Anthony Munoz is one of the greatest ever. Gardaki's kick, fair catch by David Palmer for Minnesota, and the Vikings take over. Let's go back again to Heavy or Jumbo or, well, Matt Millen. Yeah, Heavy here. Hey, John, guess what <laughs> I found? I found an old Raider, Dave Kasten, There's down here in the sideline. Then he got, he's, he's still <laughs> headbutting people. We think he could go out and still play. Hey, give a yell to John up there. 
Let's go get him. <laughs> yeah, same old ghost. There's all my old, full of wisdom. This is my old tight end. Yeah. You see that? I mean, that's yes. the way they say hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like guys shake hands and stuff. Yeah. He what? comes up and he headbutts Aren't them. you supposed to have on a helmet to do that? No, they don't. They didn't even know. He, <laughs> Dave Casper played half his life without a helmet. That's so right. Matt Millen. That's why they're still butting head. Here's Moon back to throw it. Incomplete intended for Jake Reed. That's what I like about a playoff game, too, Pat. You never know what you're going to find there. I mean, you guys, you know, we got heavy on one side, jumbo on the other side. You know, the field won't tilt. Then you come, you get an old player there. Dave Casper. Of, yeah, I mean, there's Carl Ellers down there. There's yeah. a lot of ex-Viking players. I mean, everyone comes out for the playoffs because Alan everyone Page. knows. There's Alan Page, as you say. Alan Page is a lawyer. Yeah, a judge. He's a judge, yeah, that, that's right. He is. He was a lawyer, then became a judge. But he was tough to block. Oh, boy. Chris Carter. This time he can't jump out of the trap. Maurice Douglas, the leading tackler. There's a guy who could have been in the Pro Bowl, Maurice Douglas as a nickel back and a special, special teams guy. teamer. 14-3 Chicago. Coming up on the Dockers halftime, JB, Terry, Howard, Jimmy, the whole package. We'll take a look at the first half action between the Bears and the Vikings, and they'll check out what went on in Cleveland between the Patriots and Browns and the AFC's wild card playoff game. That's all coming up on the Dockers halftime. The Vikings have ended up in this situation too often, third and long. Boom. Amp Lee is out of there, and he could score. Amp Lee is finally taken down inside the 10 and about the 7. Good running by Amp Lee. Finally taken down by John Mangum. Clock running a minute of 10 seconds left. Minnesota down to one timeout. Here's Amp Lee right here. He's in the backfield. He just makes a little delay. They try and run everyone else off and let him just go one on one. And he has that option. Remember, like Dave Megan of the Giants did for years. He has an option. He can go inside or outside to run everyone deep and let Amp Lee just work man on man. First and goal at the eight. Vikings have one timeout left. Moon out of the end zone in the direction of Chris Carter. He turned one way. Moon thought he was going to turn the other way. You know, the interesting thing, they tried to get Amp Lee through again, and Chris Zorich grabbed him. That's one of the things that you have to do. Remember the play before? You saw him go through the line. Now watch him when he tries to get through the line. He comes there, and see Chris Zorich there? He grabbed yep. him. That's, that's one way to defend that play. That is a good play. You won't see it written about, but that is very alert play by Chris Zorich. Yeah, and that's the type of thing that you know Chris Zorich knew. He got through there the play before and made a big play. He's not going to get through my hole to make another big play on a pass. 40 seconds left, second goal from the eight. There's the last Viking timeout. 14 to three. The Bears lead Minnesota in this wild card match. Hey, Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. How'd you like to have to snap that ball? <laughs> no, thank you. Well, that'd be an or that one. An industrial strength snap. <laughs> uh, you know, the Vikings didn't want to time out on that play because they don't have any more timeout. And they wanted you want to always save one for your field goal so you don't have to put it in the end zone. Now they have to throw it in the end zone. Second goal with the eight amp lead. Stays in the block this time. They get the pass complete to Chris Carter at the five. And they got to hurry up now. Clock still running. No timeouts left. Better get this one in the end zone. He better throw it down in a hurry and ground it quickly or get it in the end zone. There's the lob into the end zone and Carter. Chris Carter, as he has done so many times. Touchdown pass from Warren Moon. That's what he had to do, get it in the end zone. I think the Vikings are going to go for two in this situation. 
They're all coming in there and saying two. Well, they keep the line up in there. You see, they've done it five times this year. They're four for five, far above the rate for the rest of the NFL, which is 51%. The Vikings are better, considerably better. Terry Allen is the back, not Amp Lee. But Moon's going to throw it in and out, incomplete. 14 to 10. Thank you, pardon. 14 to 9. MC. Watch Chris Carter here on the touchdown. This is the thing. He just comes right in here. He just out muscles. That's, that's what a, a big wide receiver can do, especially down in the goal line. A wide receiver has to be tough here. Again, Moon can watch him all the way. Just throw it away from the defender up in the air, and Chris Carter is going to make a play for you. See, he's just looking. He's just throwing that one away from the defender. The hands. And we were asking Warren Moon what it was that made this guy so special yesterday, and he said he not only has those athletic gifts, he knows where everybody is, he knows the entire play, everything. And he got in a physical matchup with John Mangum, and he just won that matchup all the way. Robert Green brought the kickoff back. The clock has stopped with 14 seconds left to play in the first half. 14-9 the score. Chris Carter is, is an amazing athlete. I mean, he's one of those guys that has a great work ethic. He, he practices hard. He plays hard. He goes full speed on, on everything that he does. You know, all the great players are also the hardest workers. I, think. I mean, you always think of hard work, and work. I always think of Jerry Rice. Yeah. As you say, the great players are the guys who seem to work the hardest. I think there's a message there. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Chicago Bears 14, Minnesota 9. Stay tuned for the Dockers halftime as this Fox NFL special will continue. Halftime score, the Chicago Bears 14, the Minnesota Vikings 9. This first half highlight is brought to you by MCI proof positive and you know you're going to see Jeff Graham here and again the the Vikings think that the Bears are going to throw short and medium so they give a little fake there at the short or medium get the corner to squat Jeff Graham runs right by him and Steve Walsh throws a perfect pass 14 to 9 the score John and I get the idea from the last possession by the Vikings that Warren Moon in particular is getting a little bit more confident of that knee brace that knee yeah and uh, you know what I think happens I, I think that the Vikings are really reverting back to what they are the Vikings are a passing team and mm -hmm. they know the Warren Moon has a bad leg and we're going to try and run more but if they're going to move the ball they're going to have to throw it now, if they're going to win the game today in the second half I think Warren Moon is going to have to play him. He's going to, you know, just like he did at the end of the half. And I do think the Bears have played an outstanding first half. Yeah, and 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 both teams have been coached very well. And and I I keep thinking as I look at the score here, 14 to nine at halftime. I keep thinking of what Dave Wanstead said last night that if we can win the turnover battle, if we can win the special teams battle. But the other thing he said, if we can get in the fourth quarter and be close, he says we're going to beat the Vikings. Well, let's take a look now, John, while we have a chance at the first half statistics. Bears 38 yards rushing, the Vikings 35. Passing yards, the Bears 161, the Vikings 109. Two turnovers by Chicago, one by the Vikings. But the thing that seems still significant to me is the fact that the Vikings got those two turnovers and got only three points as a result. Yeah, I think I think the Vikings were were awfully tight early in the game, and uh, I think that hurt them. I you know because they had the opportunities, they couldn't take advantage of them. You know, I'm looking out here now at the at the Vikings pad, and 
I don't see Warren Moon out there yet. I don't either. Maybe he's just taking more time to get the brace adjusted. But as well, of the moment. Yeah, here he comes here right he comes, now. Yeah. And that and that was the thing. See, the Vikings are kicking off, so he knew that they weren't going to have the ball first. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if they were making some adjustments on that brace because sometimes a you know a brace will loosen up or a brace will tighten up and it just has to be adjusted. Talking there with Sean Salisbury, who quarterback last Monday's victory over the 49ers to put the Vikings in this game, really, at home at least, and give them the NFC Central Division Championship. Warren Moon looks comfortable at least. Well, you know, if you look at that brace that he had, you know, it's all kind of straps and everything. So, so there's a lot, a lot of stuff to adjust in there, and you know, then you got to get your pants off and do all those adjustments and. That probably took the whole halftime if they were going to do that. Juan Reve is set to kick it off. Nate Lewis back deep for the Bears. Reve's kickoff goes to Lewis at the six. The Vikings are down in a hurry. Lewis makes one miss, outruns another, and gets to about the 26 before he's taken down by Robert Griffin. An area that the Vikings were worried about. The Bears had great success against them in the game that the Vikings won about a month ago. The special teams are what kept the Bears in it. First and 10 Bears at their own 25. They lead 14 to 9. Waltz 9 out of 12. One intercepted, one touchdown. Steve Waltz back to throw it. Steps up into the pocket. Curtis Conway gets out to the Viking or to the Bear 48 first and 10 Bears. You know, in the first half we showed that that, that chart where Steve Walsh throws in front of the linebackers, behind the linebackers, in front of the secondary, or behind the secondary. And that time he hit there. See, here in front of the linebackers, he's six for eight. Here he's two for two behind the linebackers in front of the defensive backs where he just hit Conway and then two for three deep. But and those that, are pretty good numbers. Yeah, and he's starting to mix up those layers, which they didn't do before. First down, Bears. Walt gives to Raymond Harris. And Harris nudges into Viking territory. Stopped by Ed McDaniel. I but, like this Raymond oh Harris. Oh, boy, I can see why. You know, I don't know that he was going to play a lot this year until, remember, Merrill Hodge had that uh, yeah. concussion problem and, and had to retire because I think the Bears were counting on him to do this part of the work. And, and Merrill Hodge retired, and uh, here comes Raymond Harris. And, and he's, he's been very impressive. Second and five, five yards on that carry for Harris. Three wide receivers this time. Walt roll out. Gets the pass to Jeff Graham, and Graham out of bounds at the 29-yard line of Minnesota. Yeah, you know, Steve Walsh does this very well, this bootleg. This is what he got the touchdown on, where you where you start, you fake the back going this way, then you put the ball on your hip, the old bootleg, and then you come out the opposite way and hit a crossing pattern. You see, you start with a run fake, you get everything going like to the left, and then you stop it, and you run out to the right. You see, and then he has the guys crossing, and he has he has them layered as they cross, short, medium, and deep. That time he hit the medium guy. That's a good throw on the move. This is Harris. Raymond Harris still on his feet, still running. Raymond Harris, touchdown, Chicago. You didn't like him soon enough, or maybe you did. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they did at halftime, but whatever adjustments they made, or. Whatever they ate or drank in that locker room, it sure as heck worked. Oh. I mean, this bear offense came out, and Denny Green don't know what hit him. He said, where did these guys come from? I mean, they had to pass. They had to bootleg. Now, Ramon Harris to get in that pick a hole that we were talking about earlier. That play was supposed to be in the left. He started on the left, went back to the right, broke a tackle in there, and then he just burst right out of the pile. Woo! Butler for the extra point. 29-yard touchdown run for number 29. The Bears 21, Minnesota 9. 
Longest bear run of the year. You want to see why Raymond Harris cuts back? Here's John Randall. Todd Pierre, he misses Randall. He cuts up. This is where he's going to go. He sees Randall. He says, whoa, I can't go here. I better cut back here. And he does. Jack Del Rio doesn't, doesn't wrap him up. You see him? He sees Randall right there. Now he has to get away from Randall, so he cuts back there. Del Rio has him there. Doesn't wrap him. Doesn't wrap his arms around him. And Raymond Harris keeps his feet going. That's the secret. Keep, kept his feet going. Ran right through an unwrapped tackle. Robert Smith and Amp Lee back deep for Butler's kickoff. And that's Robert Smith. He had a good one earlier. And he's hit down at the 29-yard line. Tonight, Fox presents the ultimate cure for your New Year's Day hangover. It's a full hour of Bundy. Catch two great episodes of Married with Children back to back. Tonight at special earlier time, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central, right after an all-star episode of The Simpsons. Tonight on Fox. Hey, you know, like we were talking about at halftime, this, this game, if the Vikings are going to win, it's going to go back to the their offense, the passing game, and on Warren Moon's shoulders again. Warren Moon back at quarterback, has Terry Allen behind him. Moon fires wide open. Jordan balls loose bears on it and the Bears are still going I didn't hear a whistle until I just now. just now right yeah they didn't they didn't blow a whistle until the middle of that run back Ooh, this is going to be interesting the Viking offensive unit still out there oh red can't bend over and pick up the ball well, he's going to learn that the football doesn't bounce like a basketball Nope, they don't make them round. It takes it erratic bounces. I guess what they called is that, is that the, the, uh, the ball was down. But I didn't hear a whistle. No. Terry Allen behind Moon. <laughs> Allen. At about the 49. Yeah, Bears are walking up. They're getting that eighth guy up there. There's Sean Gale. Here's the previous play. Here's the here's the the one that we were talking about the the completion here, and you can just see Jordan go down, and then is down and then fumbles after he's down, which I don't believe. I don't I think, believe either. I think that ball was coming out it as was. he was going down, and I think the Minnesota Vikings caught a break there. That should have been the Bears' ball. And Lee behind Moon, second down. They need about eight for a first. Moon fires. Deflected, incomplete, intended for Chris Carter. Knocked over his head. They have that Maurice Douglas in there in that middle, number 37, because the Bears are playing him in a lot of nickel. And he's a real hitter. And you know, and anytime they come in there, it looks like they're not too anxious to get stretched yeah. out there because old Mo Douglas is going to put that helmet right on a rib. You know that. And I think I think there's been a few times that the Vikings receivers have come in there and seen Mo Douglas in there and short armed a couple of those things. Third down. Moon out of the shotgun. Fires incomplete. Bounced off the hands of Ismail. And they'll have to punt. Yeah, the Bears got them where they want them. I mean, the, 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 the Vikings are playing right into their hands. The fans are booing them again. They've turned this crowd against their team, and the Bears have the Vikings right now exactly where they want them. They, they have to pass. They know it. They're pass rushing. They're blitzing. They're playing nickel. They're doing all those things. Ex-Cowboy, ex-Patriot Mike Saxon back to punt. Jeff Graham deep for the Bears. Saxon's kick just gets out of there, and it's a good one. Graham. just as he caught it by Bobby Abrams. First down there. The Bears 21, Minnesota 9, third quarter. Pat Summerall with John Madden. Bears ball at their own 18-yard line. Moon and Carter. I'll tell you, these, these fans want a playoff win. You know, they're saying, 
you know, getting there isn't enough. We want to we want to win some playoff games here. Lewis Tillman. Right now for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. All right, Pat, next Saturday on Fox, the high-flying 49ers will be in action, which means Steve Young and Jerry Rice on offense and the defensive talents of Deion Sanders. San Francisco will host either Chicago or Green Bay next Saturday. That all begins with the pregame show at 3.30 Eastern. Back to Pat and John. And back here at the Metrodome, Todd Scott is the injured Viking player. Hard-hitting safety man. Third quarter at the Metrodome as the Bears lead the Vikings 21-9. This game summary is brought to you by Budweiser. Steve Walsh, down at the bottom, you can see his figures, 11 out of 14, 164 yards and a touchdown. He's been outstanding. Second and nine. Raymond Harris. Behind Walsh, Walsh gets it to Harris. And Harris again rumbles near a first down about a yard short. Stopped by Lamar McGriggs. Yeah, he's doing that same thing that uh, that Amp Lee did. Is you just get that hole and you just find a hole and, and, and go on through there. Now watch how they're blocking Randall. Here's the guy that they have to do is, is John Randall is the best pass rusher of this team. And Perry is a guy who's going to have a tough problem with it. So one thing, Steve Walsh helps him by getting rid of the ball quickly and taking a short drop where you can just run him right on by. Tillman and Carter. Walsh rolls. Gets it out to Carter. Carter outside the 40 to about the 43. Walsh does that, as you said before, very well. And that's that same bootleg where they cross the backs. This is an interesting play. They're going to, they, they, they cross the backs, and then they bootleg, and then he throws to the back to cross it. See the back on the right? See him sneaking out here? That's the guy that he throws to. So the back, one back goes to the left, one back goes to the right. Walsh fakes to the left, he goes to the right and throws to the back and went to the right. That's the play that looks like it's right out of the 49er playbook. Yeah, and it really, really causes the defense to get going a lot of different ways, too. First down, Bears at their own 42. Walsh threw it away. Curtis Conway hooked up. Walsh thought he was going to keep going. Playoff results earlier. Today it was Cleveland 20, New England 13, and yesterday the Dolphins 27, Kansas City 17, Marino over Montana in that meeting, and Green Bay 16 to 12 over Detroit as they totally stopped Barry Sanders. Harris, the lone setback. Walsh comes out. He's going to take off. Steve Walsh puts his head down. No slide. Todd Scott, back in the game, came up to make the hit. It was interesting talking to Steve Walsh last night about how much fun it is yeah. to, to be a player and to, and to start again. And just the things that he's doing here. We saw him bootleg on the play before. We see him just feel a little rush, get to the outside scramble he said he forgot how much fun that it is to play football it's hard work he said much harder work than being a backup and you can understand that but fun yeah when you're when you're a backup you never wake up sore on Sunday yeah. on a Monday I mean well they play Saturday game blitz coming and Walsh ducks underneath Anthony Parker came off the corner yeah, he wasn't going to take that one. Anthony Carter comes from that backside. Anthony Carter's going to come from this backside. Walsh just feels it right here. He takes a look. He sees Carter, and he says, whoa, I'm not going to take that hit. I'll just go down and punt. Back deep is Gardaki. His one kick so far has been a good one. Only 32 yards, but effective. Gardaki gets off another good one. Left-footed rocket. Fair catch signal by David Palmer and the Vikings take over deep in their own territory. Warren Moon will lead the offensive unit back. They must have stayed up 
most of the night to welcome in the new year and paint each other. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's families of, of paint jobs. <laughs> yeah, but you wonder at what point they say in a day that I'm going to get up and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint my and, friend. Right, and then how do they know when they're done? I mean, how do they say, okay, now I look good, now I'm ready to go? I don't think they really care. Do you? Yeah, but I'm going to have to know when they're done. Yeah. Now. Somebody you have to say that's it, but when you have something like that, how do you know when it's over? Unfortunately, I don't think it is. Maybe it's when they just run out of paint. First down. And on back to Terry Allen from Moon. Maurice Douglas to make the stop. See, and here's the problem right here. In the first two meetings, they've averaged five yards a rush. Today, they've only averaged 2.9 yards a rush. And then you couple that with the fact that they're averaging about eight yards on third down. You know, third and eight. So by not getting anything on first down or second down, they're coming up third and long all the time, and they just can't put anything together. Right now, it's second and ten. Look out for Chris Carter, the man on the move to the left. Moon fires to Andrew Jordan, his rookie tight end. Stopped by Barry Minter and John Mangum. Not enough for a first. Randall McDaniel was out there with a little extra action, a little pushing. He and I think it's Chris Zorich. You know, there's going to be a point where the where the Vikings, unless they start moving the ball and having something good happen for them, are going to start getting frustrated. Nearing right. seven minutes to play in the third quarter, and Chicago ahead, 21 to nine. Moon back to throw it. Gets it out. To Andrew Jordan again, the tight end, and this will be enough for a first down. Stopped by Maurice Douglas. Scotty Graham checks in. Yeah, this is what the Vikings have to have to start doing now is just getting something going, getting some consistency. You know, mixing a little run in. Denny Green thought that you know that they would be able to do it with the run. They aren't going to be able to do it with the run. As I said earlier, it's going to boil down. Warren Moon has to win this game. He was very emphatic about yesterday. I don't want Warren Moon throwing the ball 40, 45 times, but he's going to have to. Moon back to throw it again. Gets it to Amp Lee, and Amp Lee gets out to the 35. Not enough for the first, and the clock continues to run. But, you know, it's tough. It's tough to change. I mean, that's, that's what you got the Minnesota Vikings here is a passing game. So it's tough to say, well, Warren Moon hurt his knee, so therefore we're going to be in the playoffs. We're going to become a running team. They've tried all year to get balance, and they've never been able to do it. So there's no reason to believe that they're going to be able to do it today. Eventually, you got to go back to what you do best. And who you are. Second and one. Moon gives the ball to Graham, and Graham has the first down to about the 44-yard line. Sean Gale and Maurice Douglas made the stop. And, and here's a guy who may be a part of it. You're going to see Scotty Graham run right in here. You know, of all the guys in the team, Scotty Graham, pound for pound, is one of the strongest guys. I mean, he's a powerful guy, and you can just see you can't arm tackle him. I mean, you've got to wrap him up and get a whole bunch of guys that are 5'9", 215 pounds of real power. First down. Moon gives again to Graham, and he's tripped up before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And here's that second and long situation, that third and long, where Moon has got to throw it. Yep, and this isn't the balance that they wanted. You look, they've almost passed, you know, twice as many yep. times as they run the ball, and passed 27 times, and Denny Green didn't want it, one of those 40-45 pass games. But as you said earlier, he's, he's going to get it. May not want it. But if you want to win, he's going to get it. Yep. Amp Lee is behind Moon. The X-49er. Fake to him. Moon from behind by Trace Armstrong. You know, that's the second time, Pat, they've got in that three-man line, and Trace Armstrong has beaten Chris Hinton. You're going to see the same thing. See, they only got three. One, two, and here's, here's Trace Armstrong going right around Chris Hinton. He did that in the first half, and he did it again. Just man to man, just three rushers. He just beats them right there. Warren Moon starts to step up, and there's nothing he can do about it. But you have to. If you're going to be a playoff team, you have to be able, with your five guys, to block their three. Four wide receivers for Minnesota. 
Third down and about 15. Spellman jumped offside. That should never happen. If Spellman jumping offside should never happen, but three-man line offside. getting to Warren Moon Hunter twice. To the quarterback, number 90 on the defense. Five yards, still third down. Dave wants that. You can talk about coach of the year and who's done the good jobs. There's a guy that's done as good a job as anybody. Oh uh, yeah, he's he's, he's an outstanding coach. I, mean, I thought he was he was a top defensive coordinator when he was with the Dallas Cowboys. I thought he would make an outstanding head coach when he had the opportunity. And I think that he's proven that he's going to that he is an outstanding head coach. Third and ten. Still third and passing yardage. Still that three-man line, yeah. eight, eight defenders. Screen pass against the eight defenders. And Ant Lee dances out of it. Lee to the 35-yard line. First down, Vikings, good call there. That's not bad, D. The, the, the Bear defense was in that, that three-man or, or a prevent type thing. They got a little soft. And when they get a little soft, see they're backing everything up, rushing with a three-man line. Then you can get your line. There's there's McDaniel there. He goes out there. He shoots the air. He doesn't get anything, but Ampley makes a couple good moves, a couple missed tackles, keeps bouncing and spinning until he gets a first down and gets the ball down inside the 35-yard line. The injured Bears, Maurice Douglas, who was caught up in the middle of that screen and the blocking wall in front of it, 21-9, the Bears lead. 319 left in the third. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Bears 21, the Vikings 9. Pat Summerall with John Madden. This Minnesota drive started at their own 14. They've held the ball almost five minutes. Former Viking. First and 10 at the Bears 33. And Lee trying to sneak through the middle. Ismail makes the catch. Sean Gale makes the tackle. You know, this Bear defense have been playing so well all day, and now they're starting to miss tackle. They missed about four tackles on that screen pass, and here they're going to miss another tackle right there. And you know, the, the thing is, they've been so playing so well, pursuing, gang tackling, crisp tackling. Now they look like they got a little soft. Maybe they're getting a little tired, but they're starting on the last couple plays to miss tackles. Scotty Graham comes in as the deep back second and two. The ball is given to Graham. Graham gets first down flag on the play. This has killed them all day long. If this is holding, Albert Fontenot made the stop. Hey, the guy that's having a tough time. I don't know if it's against Chris Hinton or not, but if it is, he's he's had a long, long day today. Holding during the run, number 75 on the offense. 10 yards, still second out. Daphne. That's Bernard Daphne. He's the, the right guard there. You see him, he starts there, and he just puts his left hand out, and his right hand, he just had a little part of that jersey. But a guy that big ought to be more aggressive. He should have been firing out instead of standing up and catching anyway. No question about it being holding. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he didn't have to. I mean, you, you know, you just fire out and knock the guy off the line. You don't have to stand up and hold him like that. When you that. weigh 350, second and 12. Moon back to throw it. Spellman around the corner. The pass is intercepted by the Bears. Jeremy Lincoln. And the Bears take over. Moon took advantage of that zone earlier, and then that zone took advantage of Moon there. Jeremy Lincoln was just sitting there in the zone. He was a deep guy. Moon overthrows it. He's going to catch it. Here's Jeremy Lincoln here. You'll see him. He's just going to drop back. He has a deep third. He's going back, back into the zone, and then he stops, and the ball's just overthrown, and yep. there it is, thrown right to Jeremy Lincoln. Lincoln thought he probably should have stayed on his feet a little bit longer. Here's Chris Carter. Yeah, this is the frustration that we're going to talk about that is going to set in with these Vikings if they don't start winning this game. A minute, 55 seconds left in the third, and the Bears lead it. Yeah. 
Raymond Harris the ball carrier not much of a game you know, Jay Lewenberg just went out here and, and McGriggs took a swing at him and Lewenberg walked away from him he tried to get a penalty for a fight I think that every play the bear the the Bears are going to try and taunt the Vikings into a, a penalty for fighting now because they know frustration is going to start setting in Tillman and Carter behind Walsh Walsh dumps it out to Tillman couldn't find the handle bounced off his head and then onto the ground Ed McDaniel made the hit never had control can't be a fumble But this is the way it looks up on top and watch what happens to Steve Walsh when when he throws this ball. I mean he's going to throw the ball and then boom, they just knock both legs. That's that's the way you don't get hurt Roy when Parker. you get hit and both legs go straight up when your feet go towards the ceiling. You're not going to get caught in the turf third and nine Walsh pointing out somebody in the defensive setup and back to throw his wall. Shovels it forward. Curtis Conway maybe in the area somewhere or somebody. I think it hit John shot. Randall. It did. It did. I know. I mean, he's lucky Randall is, is, a, is a nose tackle or a defensive tackle and didn't get his hands up. Because I don't know what Walsh is trying to do here. He's trying to shovel the ball somewhere and he shoveled it right to the face of John Randall. Watch Randall. He's working there against Perry Poole. Big old guys in the pitch and the ball hits him in the face. Todd Ducky punts for the Bears and fair catch is signaled by David Palmer. Cardocky's done a good job today. He's been in sort of a slump, very erratic, but today his punts have been good. Don't forget, next weekend the playoff race continues on Fox with the NFC Divisional Playoffs on Saturday. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, when Terry Howie, Jimmy, and JB host the number one pregame show in America, followed by either the Packers or the Bears in a battle with the 49ers. Then on Sunday, guys are back beginning at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, followed by either of these two teams or maybe the Packers at Dallas. Pass is incomplete, intended for Andrew Jordan. Yeah, I still think that they're not going to have a lot of success passing there in the middle that that maybe they're short across this to Carter but I think they're going to have to get the ball the ball to the outside and they have to get it in front of those you know the Bears are playing a, a soft zone they're keeping those that secondary deep so you're not going to get behind it but you can still get deep in front of it second down and ten for the Vikings less than a minute left in the third. Passes down the seam to Amp Lee, and Amp Lee still on his feet. Still on his feet, and Amp Lee finally taken out of bounds at the 31-yard line of Chicago by Maurice Douglas, who's back. A gain of 37 yards. Amp Lee's had a good day. That's what you want to do. When you get these guys coming out, coming out, then that gives you the middle, and you just hit it right up the seam. The seam that these guys create. This is the seam right here, and you just try and go right up that. Usually it's a tight end, but here it's a back. You see Ampley? See him break right up the middle now? That's the seam. Everyone went, went out and went to the middle, and they left that seam for Ampley. Who has four catches for 107 yards. Steve Jordan, the man in motion. Out to, dropped it to Steve Jordan. He just clear up what I started into a minute ago. If the Vikings win, they play in Dallas. If the Bears win, they go to San Francisco. And Green Bay goes to Dallas. Yeah, and we're going to be in Dallas right. next Sunday. As you say, it'll either be the Green Bay Packers or the. Which is just, it'll either be the Green Bay <laughs> or Packers the Vikings. or the Minnesota Vikings. Right. Yeah. Now, if the Vikings win, they go to Dallas. Right. Now we got it. Confusing. Second and ten, and Moon back to throw it. Bears started the blitz. Moon out of bounds. Out of bounds. Chris Carter 
with a diving gallant attempt. But out of bounds, Sean Gale is the bear defender. That's the area, though. I mean, you you want you want to get out there. It's over Sean Gale. Sean Gale made a, a pretty good play of getting between Chris Carter and Warren Moon. So the ball had to go over. You see how the, the ball had to go over Sean Gale. If his foot is not right on the end of the line, it looked like he came very close to getting both feet down. Yeah, but I don't think he did. I don't believe he has the ball. Yeah. And we out of the backfield. Moon struggles to, in the other direction. Fires deep for Ismail. Knocked away by Mark Carrier. Good play. That is a heck of a play by Mark Carrier. If he doesn't make that, that's a touchdown. Watch this. Mark Carrier comes all the way over from center field and knocks that ball away from Quadri Ismail just as he's ready for the touchdown. That reminds me of a play. Remember in the playoffs when Ronnie Lott yeah, hit oh. out against the Rams, Flipper Anderson? All the way across the field. Same type of play. Reves from 49 yards out. That'll get there. And Reves is good again. Seven seconds left to play in the third quarter. It's 21 to 12 now. And Mark Carrier just saved four points. That was a heck of a play. Kenny Green knows that he's had the number of this guy and this team. Kenny Green's been with the Vikings for three years, never lost to the Bears. And obviously never lost to Dave Wonstadt. But he can see that this one hasn't been his day so far. I mean, it's been a it's been a, a, a real fight for these Vikings. The Bears have played well. The Bears have played almost perfectly. Except for those early turnovers. And one big pass down the seam. The completion to Amp Lee from Moon. And then that guy, like I said, just saved four points. Nate Lewis back deep for Rafay's kickoff. Yeah, you know, one thing that that drive did is got these fans back in the game. Yeah. Look at them now. I mean, they all got these white pom-poms going. They're standing. They're yelling. They're they're behind their team because they had left for a while. This crowd had left for a while, but they're back right now. Look at them. This joint's starting to look like a playoff game now. This and is what listen, it's all about. Listen to them. There's a certain finality. You don't want to take that uniform off for the last time. Those are the words of Boren Moon yesterday. And the loser is out. Quad Reves set to kick it off. And Nate Lewis back deep for the bear. Not a good kick. Out of bounds. And so the Bears won't have to return it, but they'll have good field position. Yeah, every time the Vikings do something well, then they shoot themselves in the foot. Yep. I mean, they finally get it. Reves, you know, kicks a field goal. They get something going. Then they kick the ball out of bounds. And they give the Bears good field position. Now the game clock shows no time remaining. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Bears 21, the Vikings 12. This Fox NFL special will continue after these messages from your local Fox station. Happy New Year's Day from Fox. Automotive experts praised our cab forward innovation, smiled on our continued success, and followed us to a new plateau, naming Chrysler Cirrus Motor Trends Car of the Year. Your Chrysler Plymouth dealer now presents the car. Ready to start the fourth quarter at the Hubert Humphrey Metrodome. Look what has happened to the Bears here in the dome. I think that's why Dave Wonstadt said last night, if we're close to fourth quarter, we're winning it this year. Walsh hits Conway. Good throw and a flag on the play. And it's in that area of offensive holding. Could be roughing the passer also. It's in that area too. 
And when the referee calls it, which Red Cashin did, it's probably going to be roughing the passer. Roughing the passer, number 93 on the defense, 15 yards added on. John Randall, watch number 93. He's coming from that backside. And you just see, after Steve Walsh throws it, John Randall gave him a little pop. Steve Walsh was Steve Walsh saw that yellow flag out of the corner of his eye too. John Randall not happy with that call at all. Neither is Denny Green. You wouldn't expect them to be too happy, would you? Now they, you know, they have something good happen to them. Then, then they have the, I mean, they, they kick the ball off out of bounds and have a 15 yard pass. Flag on this play as Harris goes over the right side for perhaps a yard, but the Vikings jump. Roy Barker, I think, was early. So that's three bad plays in a row then. They kick the ball out of bounds, hit the quarterback after he throws it, and then jump offside. And that's not championship no. football. In all due respect, that's not how you get to the next step in this thing. You avoid those things. That doesn't mean you play cautiously. Five yards, still first down. Was Barker. I think Green knows it. You know, 21, 12. He needs it. He needs a defensive play here. I mean, his his defense has to make something happen here. They have to. They have to make the score. They have to get field position. First and five. Walsh is going to put it up. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Marv Cook. Just a little bit high, but. Maybe I've, could have been caught. I've been impressed with Steve Walsh yeah, today. I mean, he's playing aggressively. Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, they didn't they didn't put this offense in a in a shell. And I know that you know Steve Walsh. Uh, you know we were talking that last week Dave Wanstad told him at halftime that he may put Eric Kramer in there. So Steve Walsh lived with that whole thing all week, and he said that doesn't bother him because he knows he has to play well anyway. What's that? What kind of pressure is that going to put on him? Second and five. off to Lewis Tillman not much Ed McDaniel made the stop I was just saying they didn't go into a shell and then they ran a play that looked like it was in a shell it's Tony Dungy yeah well he knows he knows that you know, you know that the offense is struggling that he's going to have to get a play that his defense is going to have to get him a play if they're going to win this game third and five Harris is the deep back. Four wideouts for Walt and the Bears. Ryan Wetnight. There's a draw play, and Raymond Harris surge at the end might have gotten him a Bear first down. Ramon Harris is a is a rookie, but he says at the end of the year now he's an experience. You know, I mean, you're a veteran rookie by the time you you play this long. And this is the end of the year for somebody. I know, and he's playing like he's been playing this game for five, six, seven, eight years. This would appear to be about a football length short. How can I tell from this distance? I don't know. I I thought he had a first down when he, when he ran beginning. it. You never know where they put that ball or how they put that ball where they put that ball. But you're right. About a football length. But that looked like they got a bad spot there, Pat, because when he went down, yeah. it looked like he had the first down. Yep. They're going to go, I think. Never up, never in. Got to tee it up now. Just don't want to hit it out of bounds. Oh. I don't know what Steve Walsh is waiting for. He just started the 25 second clock so he's still got plenty of time and he's going ahead with it and he got it. Walsh went quickly and once he got up there on the quarterback sneak and got the bear first down. 13 12 left now on the clock running. Steve Walsh has to be feeling good. If I mean, if he can win this this game this is going to be one of the biggest days of his life because he's from this area. Steve Walsh went to high school right here in St. Paul and his parents are here at the game and his friends and, and 
And if you're going to do it, this isn't a bad place to do it if you're Steve Walsh. Tillman and Carter behind Walsh. Going deep. Touchdown, Bears, Jeff Graham. Walsh to Graham. He saw something. Right, he, he knew that they didn't expect him to do that. That's the second one that he got to, that he got to Graham today. The second one deep. And you're going to see Dwayne Washington again up there in tight coverage. He goes for a bump and he whips him and he can't catch up with it. And that's just a perfect throw by Steve Walsh. Jeff Graham was pretty good on that too. But Dwayne Washington went to bump him and missed him. Butler for the extra point. He is perfect. And the Bears lead it 28 to 12 with 12 minutes and 42 seconds left to play in the contest. Come on! Come on! This guy Come is sort of kind of a wailing call. 28 12. I think they need more than that guy. <laughs> They better do some blocking, tackling, throwing, and catching, and covering and stuff. Robert Smith and Amp Lee back deep. Butler will kick off again. 28-12, bare lead. Robert Smith at about the seven. Cut down by Ryan Cox and Maurice Douglas. You know, let's watch that touchdown again, Pat, and we're going to see that they put Conway in motion, the safety goes with him, then when Walsh sees that, he gives a signal out here to Graham uh, to run the up. Now watch him. See, the motion will start. There goes the motion. Now Walsh, watch Steve Walsh, the quarterback. See that signal he gives right there? See when the motion goes, then he gives a signal out here to Graham uh, to run that quick up. That's what a smart quarterback will do for you. Put motion, check motion, check coverage, give a signal, and then throw it. Here's Moon Chase. Gets rid of it. Incomplete. Right now, again, for a McDonald's game break, let's return to James Brown in our Hollywood studio. All right, Pat, after a bye week, the Cowboys get back to work, hoping to rekindle the fire. Aikman hopes to team up with a healthy Emmett Smith on the ground and through the air with Michael Irvin. The aim, an unprecedented third straight Super Bowl title. Next Sunday, it all begins with the pregame show. Let's go back to Pat and John. And that's where we'll be in Dallas next week, second and 10 for Minnesota. Middle screen to Amp Lee, looking for some place to go, and this time nothing is there. Barry Minter and Maurice Douglas. Again, Maurice Douglas was, has, has been playing just about this whole game, which means that, that the Bears have been playing a form of nickel just about this whole game, knowing, again, that the Vikings have to pass, and again, the Vikings are now have to play into their hands. Clock running with 11.55 left in the game. Moon out of the shotgun. The Bear Rush is not there yet and doesn't get there. To Chris Carter, Viking first down. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Minnesota Vikings and the National Football League is prohibited. First down, Minnesota. Well, the Bears on that last one were in that three-man line again. Now they had a completion against them, so now they went back to the four-man line. Here's Moon. Ball on the bounce to Amp Lee. Flag on the play. I think that's going to be against the left tackle, Todd Stussy, who's a rookie who's really been doing a pretty good job against Alonzo Spellman, but I think he held Spellman on that play. He had the four-man rush going that time. Yeah, and, and I think, again, Stussy's been doing a pretty good job yep. over there Holy on Spellman. Yep. Number 73 on the offense. 10 that's yards, still first down. The rookie. 
That's big old Stussy, and he was he was holding Spellman. Then uh, you can put a mouthpiece anywhere, Pat. I mean, you you know if you if you get tired of putting it in your mouth, you just put it in your nose or in your eyes. Or just let it dangle. Yeah. Just let it flop around there. You know, you know what happens really? It's it's harder to keep a mouthpiece in when you get tired. Moon incomplete. Carter in the area. Yeah, we know that Moon has the, the problem with the left knee and the brace and, you know, hasn't played and so on, but he just doesn't look like, I mean, he doesn't look like Warren Moon. He really, I mean, he looks like he's having a hard time getting into this game. Well, you remember yesterday when you asked him if he was comfortable, he said, yes, I am now, but it wasn't until about the fourth game that he got comfortable, and now with a bad wheel, yeah, he's uncomfortable I, again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he, he just doesn't look like he's with it today. Well, he's bothered, no question, by that brace. Now he goes back up under the center, screen pass to the left. Some room this time to Amp Lee. Lee gets back some of the yardage brought about by that penalty, and it'll be third down and about five or six. Barry Minter made the stop. One of the things you can see that, you know, he's starting to drag that left knee and limp more because, and he even talked about this before the game, that that fatigue sets in. Yeah. And you know the thing is heavy and it does put you out of balance and you start getting fatigue in that injured leg and Warren Moon is going through that now. Flag on the play, Spellman from behind, nails Moon, the ball, ball is incomplete, flags on the play. Spellman I think came around the corner too soon. That was Spellman, Spellman just came to life on the on, on these last couple of plays. He's been kept under control pretty much today. And then he came, you know, he, he just got a penalty against him when Stussy held him, and now he went back, and he's going to be penalized. Should make it third and about a yard. There has to be a middle in there. Sometimes he's late Outside, off the ball. Number 90 on the defense, five yards, still third down. Sometimes he's late off the ball. If there's any problem with Alonzo Spellman, I think that he comes late a lot, and then at this time he went early. So if he could get right in between there, you know, in between where you're the last guy off the ball and you're off the ball before it snapped, I think he could be a dominant player in this league someday. Third one, he certainly has the tools. Carter in motion. Moon. A lunge by the first down by Terry Allen. Lunge for the first down. You see number 55, Vincent Smith in there. He came in and made a... <laughs> Hit and got knocked back out. McDaniel also on the blocking end of things. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're coming in and there's a there's a collision here. But watch Vincent Smith, 55. Boom, he hits it and he just gets knocked over to the side in a pile. There's a big old pile of guy down there and he got knocked right to the top of the pile of guy. First down. McDaniel actually was the fullback. Yeah, he's one of those guys that they, you know, move from guard to, to fullback in short yardage. And again, now when they get the first down as they did, then they have to take McDaniel out for a play before he can go back to guard. That's why he's on the sideline now. Ten minutes left to play. The Bears 28. The Vikings 12. Warren Moon has gone all the way at quarterback for Minnesota. Intended for Chris Carter and complete behind him. You know, it looks like any time they throw, there's a whole bunch of defensive bears around the Viking. I mean, there's Mangum and he's playing out there. They're just playing a zone, but they got guys underneath them. They got guys on both sides of them, and and they don't give them a lot of lanes or areas to throw the ball in in this zone. Second and ten. Lee behind Moon Carter in motion. Not much pressure from the Bears. Catch made by Isbell. A leaping catch in front of Sean Gale. You're gonna see here's here's Quadre Ismail up here, and you see what the zone is, and he and he gets beyond the short guy and in front of the deep guy, and then runs that in, 
and a moon hits him right in that hole. There haven't been a lot of holes like this today to hit in because these bear zones haven't given many big holes. Robert Smith, the ball carrier, in the draw play, brings up second and long. Barry Minter on the stop. Crowd doesn't like the call too much. Now they, I, I guess they just want him to pass every down. I anytime, guess. Anytime they run, they don't make any yards. And then anytime they don't make any yards, then the fans boo. And this isn't the kind of game that Dennis Green wanted to get into today. 28 to 12, the Bears lead, but he didn't want to throw it this much. Robert Smith stays in as the deep back. The Bears showing blitz. They're coming after Moon, and they almost got him, but he got the ball out of there to Carter. And Carter gets it out of bounds for a Viking first down at the Bear 14. That was a heck of a play by Warren Moon. I mean, to be able to stand in there, get that rush. I mean, he's so big and so strong. But watch, they're bringing the blitz on him now. The safety's coming. The end's coming around. They got his, his leg. They're grabbing him by the leg, and he's throwing the ball to Carter. Watch Carter. He kind of comes off the ball slowly to delay. Then he's going to go underneath on a cross. Warren Moon lays it out in front of him, and he makes a heck of a catch. Now they got to go for the end zone. First at 10, Minnesota. Eight minutes left. Moon back to throw it. For the end zone incomplete. Jake Reed was the intended receiver. And with the, with the Vikings, what the Vikings have to be thinking now is, is there's 7.58 left, and they have to be thinking of two scores. So he's already thrown the ball 43 times. This is the kind of game they didn't want, but they're in it. And he's going to throw it a heck of a lot more because, like I say, they got 758 and they need two scores and then two two points. He's going to have to get up in the neighborhood of 50 throws before they're going to win. Still plenty of time. 758 left. Moon drops it out to Amp Lee. And Lee stays on his feet, spinning down inside the Bear 10. The ball comes loose. The Bears fall on it. But the officials are saying that Amp Lee was down. Barry Minter made the top stop on Amp Lee. It'll be first and goal. Vikings at about the eight and a half yard line. Not first and goal. Beg your pardon. Third and four. And Dave Wanstad knows that he would like, you know, that it's going to be two plays here. So. His defense is thinking in terms of two plays. The offense is thinking in two plays. There's no field goals involved here. Moon back to throw it again. Jake Reed gets inside the four. Now it's first and goal. Just watch Jake Reed out there again, the big receiver. He just he just stands out there. He runs about three or four steps. And he just runs a quick, everyone runs off. They're, they're still zoning. They're, they're zoning that end zone. Jake Reed just stops. Warren Moon sees him, just zips it out there to him. First and goal at just outside the two. McDaniel in the backfield. Graham. Terry Allen over the top. It was not Graham. 21 instead of 31. Over the top, not quite. The thing is that they're going to have to do this again because we're, you know, time is starting to be important to them now. They got to get the score because they got to get the ball back and get another score. See, and he got turned sideways, so he didn't get that ball in there. Second and goal from the one. Imagine he'd run the same type of play. Allen behind McDaniel. Moon's going to throw it. Touchdown to Andrew Jordan. Now Moon has to stay out there. They have to go for two. Because they needed this touchdown. They needed two. Then they need another touchdown. Then another two. They're stopping. There, there might be a flag on this play. There is no touchdown. Hey, 
pass interference on the outfit, number 46. Ten yards, still second down. Number 46, sometime a guard, sometimes a tight end. And that had to be John Jurek as a tight end. He's lined yep. up right there. As you say, he's a, he's a tight end. Again, this is a play pass where you fake the run. See, he comes in there, and what they said is that he picked Sean Gale, who's complaining right there. Here's Sean Gale here complaining, and what they called was that a pick, and I don't know that that wasn't just a converted guard running a crossing pattern. Yeah. Second and goal at the 11. And Lee is the deep back. Lee. Here's Moon with time chased and fires it out of the end zone. Pressured by Chris Zorich and yeah. Albert Fontenot. He knew that on second down, the, the, the thing that they can't afford here is a turnover. So when he didn't have time, he was flushed. Then when he was flushed, he couldn't find anyone open. He just threw that thing away. Brings up third and goal. Just outside the 10. Again was the back. Moon has all kinds of time. Now he's chased by the Bears. Gets out of the trap. Touchdown, Vikings. Amp Lee. The Bears had him in their grasp. He somehow got away and completed the touchdown pass to Amp Lee. Look at the Bear players. I know they're just laying all over the field. I mean the Bear defense has really been on the field a long time. Their gas tank is getting close to empty. But what an effort by Warren Moon. Mm. This is where a guy shows, you know, what a pro he is. This has been a tough day for him. You know, and, and, and things are getting tired. He's getting tired. Pretty good pass protection. Then it breaks down, but he keeps working. He keeps working. He looks, and he finds Amp Lee for the touchdown. But that was 90%. That play was 90% number one. And that's why he's close to number one. And again, the Vikings need the two here. Terry Allen in the backfield. Now he moves over to his right, and Jordan's the tight end on the left. That's Steve Jordan. Moon back to throw it. Throws it over everybody. The official couldn't even make the catch. Twenty-eight to eighteen, Bears. The NFC wild card match, the Bears, the Vikings. 536 remain. The Bears lead by 10 points. So that means that the that the Vikings are going to have to do an onside kick here. Had they made the two points, then they could have kicked off. But now again, they still need two scores. Rave. Onside kick attempt. The Bears dive on it. And the onside kick attempt is unsuccessful as Tom Waddle. I think if there, was, big play. I if like there was anyone that I wanted to catch an onside kick for me, it would be Tom Waddle. Here's the onside kick. And again, I said if there's anyone that I'd want to catch an onside kick, it would be number 87, Tom Waddle. Watch him come up, catch that thing right on the short hop, and just smother the ball. Talk about a sure-handed guy and a real football player. Tom Waddle will always make a big play for you. Always has. On a first down, it's Harris. Down inside the Minnesota 35 to about the 34. You know, the, the thing that Dave Wanstad has done is, you know, kept some veterans like a Tom Waddle around, but really brought a lot of, you know, new players and young players here. And, and in his second year has really molded this thing. I mean, it's amazing because he doesn't have a lot of good players on this team, believe me. What he does have is a lot of speed. Yeah, but, you know, he doesn't have one player no. in the Pro Bowl. And they really have no outstanding pass rusher, no great runner. Incomplete, intended for Jeff Graham. 
But speed is the ingredient that he was looking for. And that's what they did at Dallas. They went yeah. there and they and they built that team with speed. And look at that defensive line. You saw Alonzo Spellman there. They are tired. I mean, you know, you, it's cold outside. Like it's like five degrees outside or something. But it's hard to find if you're a player down there. It's hard to find a lot of oxygen. I'm going to go ice fishing. Last time I was here, <laughs> I went ice fishing. Yeah. And, and, and we caught them and cleaned them and cooked them and ate them all in two hours. Boom. Walleye fresh. pikes. Fresh. Fresh fish. Can't beat it. On a Tillman. great day. Tillman, the deep back. He is past the 30-yard line, very near a first down for the Bears. Today's game is being produced by Bob Stinner and directed by Sandy Grossman. Studio is produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy. And the executive producers of Fox Sports are Ed Gorin and David Hill. This is our first playoff game on Fox. Bears by 10. I tell you, it's tough. I mean, you know, I mean, you can talk about the fluids and everything you lose in the game. I mean, Alonzo Spellman is in great condition. And he has really emptied his tank in this game. Fourth and short. I don't think he got it. This is going to be one of those left foot, right foot deals where they're going to spot that thing. John Turlink, the defensive line coach, is saying first down, Vikings. I don't think he got it. I don't either. Viking offensive unit on the field. Here's the defensive play. This is the thing that Dave Wanstead that didn't want to kick a field goal. He's only on the 30 yard line, so there was no need to punt it. So I think he made the right decision in going for it. I don't know if that was a right play. I, mean, I don't know whether I'd run a flip or something because they've had, you know, some success with quarterback sneaking with, you know, Harris going up the middle. But I think that they did the right thing. But now the Vikings still have a chance because they need two scores again. Right. They're going to have to get a score, either field goal or touchdown, onside kick, and another score. It's Ampley behind Warren Moon. Four minutes and three seconds left. The Bears by ten. The Vikings still in it. Moon's pass complete to Steve Jordan. Stopped by Barry Minter, but it's a Viking first down. Moon telling them to hurry up. And if, and if I were the Vikings, I would go down there and get a, a field goal as quickly as I could and then try the onside kick. Not spend all my time waiting for a touchdown. Moon. Incomplete. In the direction of Chris Carter. John Mangum was the nearest bear. Steve Waltz down there giving a pep talk. Warren Moon was hoping that he wouldn't have to play this kind of game. Dennis Green was hoping that he wouldn't have to. And want one of those 45 pass games. He's already over that. And as you say, if they're going to be in this game, he's going to be yep. quite a bit over. He's going to be over the 50s. Second and 10. Moon back to throw it again, going deep. Bouncing around and incomplete. Ismail said, they were bothering me. Oh, he's getting a little too close. He wants to pass interference there. Moon now 27 out of 51. Before that pass, it was 50, obviously. There's Ismail there up on top. Right in the pad. I don't. I think. Nope. I think that's pretty good coverage. Yep. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Jeremy Lincoln was just right there running with him, and he has as much right to that ball as Ismail. Third and ten. And Lee has been dangerous all day. Screen pass is to Amp Lee. Lee will not get the first down. It'll be fourth, and I think they got to go for it here, don't you? Oh yeah, yeah. They they definitely have to go for it. I mean, and and probably they're going to take a timeout now before they do go for it they because do. they have all three of their timeouts. So now they have two left. And Warren Moon heads for the sideline. Back at the Metrodome in Minneapolis, 317 left to play, 28-18, the Chicago Bears lead Minnesota. Don't forget to stick with us following 
the post game for the post game show and then after the post game show encounters fourth and five moon back to throw as time gets it to amp lee fumble and the bears pick it up this one's alive and that's kevin minifield and the bears are headed for san francisco 50-yard fumble return. Warren Moon saying what happened. Amp Lee, it was fourth down. Amp Lee was trying to get that extra. He was trying to put the ball over the first down marker. And in doing so, he fumbled it. Minifield just picked it up, ran in the end zone. And there was no whistle on it. Watch Amp Lee. He's catching his ball. It's fourth down. He was going to try and stretch out, but he got hit just before he did it by Maurice Douglas. Minifield picks it up and takes it in the end zone. And it's going to be the Bears against the 49ers. And the game we'll do in Dallas will be the Packers against the Cowboys. I'll tell you, that Maurice Douglas has Both. played a heck of a game for this Chicago Bear defense today. Butler for the extra point. 3.05 left to play. It's the Bears 35, the Vikings 18. Yeah, you just felt the confidence last night. You wonder where it came from. You know, the Bears came in here, and they were a very confident group. And, uh, you know, Dave Wanstad, he wasn't too confident because he was sick. The night before on Friday night, he had to have the doctors and trainers come over to his house and give him intravenous uh, uh, feedings or whatever that stuff where they stick your needle in you. And all he that was stuff. still sick at the meeting last night. Yeah, he could hardly get through a meeting, but he just had the feeling that this Bear team was overly confident, and you wonder where it came from. Well, maybe it's the law of average. Maybe it's good play by a defensive unit. Maybe it's good play by Steve Walsh, an outstanding game by Raymond Harris. Just a lot of things. Yeah, I think Ron Turner, the offensive yeah. coordinator, you know, and because the, the Vikings came in here and said, we got to stop their run. They thought Steve Walsh would just throw, throw short, but they came in, and not only did he throw the ball, but he didn't throw it short. I mean, he threw it medium, and he threw it deep. They got a couple big plays to Jeff Graham, and, and Steve Walsh came in here a relaxed and confident quarterback, not a guy that was looking over his shoulder and worrying about the hook being put in him and Eric Kramer being put in and the game. And you mentioned Ray, uh, Maurice Douglas and what an outstanding game he's had, but the whole Bear defensive unit did a heck of a job. Well, I think I, I think that they played them that way. They played them basically with their nickel defense. They played the extra defensive backs in there. The Vikings couldn't run, so they were able to gang up on their pass, and they did that. 3.05 left. The Vikings with two timeouts left. The Bears with all of theirs. Butler to kick it off again. And that is Robert Smith. He fumbles it. Bounces it around inside the 10. And is taken down at about the 13-yard line by John Theory. Unless a miracle happens, it'll be these Bears against the 49ers. Coverage begins next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific time. And the Packers against the Cowboys at Texas Stadium coverage beginning at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Sean Salisbury takes over at quarterback the NASDAQ stock market postgame report with J.B., Terry, Howie, Jimmy. Wild card analysis. From our group. Amp Lee is back with Salisbury. Salisbury goes it out. Pass complete to David Palmer. Old Donnell Wolford was out there. He was yeah. ready to jump on that thing and take it in the end zone. One thing I like about this Bear team, I mean, they're, they're a gambling team. They came in there. Uh, it, and In fact, when I was talking yesterday to Danny Abramowitz, he told the guys, he said, he went in a meeting and said, hey, look, relax. He says, we have nothing to lose. He said, no one expects, we're the last seed. No one expects us to win. They didn't expect us to be here. So he said, just relax, go have fun. Four teams out of the NFC Central, and I think everybody just about agreed that the Bears 
were perhaps the weakest team of the group. As you said, they were the fourth seed. Yeah, and if, and if they're going to say that, then what the heck? You may as well you don't, yeah. don't worry about it. I don't think Walsh is doing what I just thought I saw him thinking to do. Did so he? The, he wouldn't throw it on a sick coach, would he? The Gatorade bucket? No, they got to they got to know he's sick. I mean, he was he was taking pills last night and intravenous the night before and doctors and trainers over at his house. Not only pills, they're a bad looking pill. I know it. I know it. He just left a half a piece of fruit and a pill on a plate. And I thought, <laughs> man, that's what coach is down to. Lee juggled and got the first down. Stopped by Barry Minter at the end of this game. John and I'll select a Miller-like player of the game. And that's going to be difficult. I'll tell you, if this guy here is pointing to this, and if he takes this and dumps it on that, he'll be the player of the game. <laughs> but I don't think I don't and think I, mean, he, I don't think he's going to do any more than point. If he doesn't, he's going to be the most humane player of the game. Yeah, but I mean, you have to have. Yeah, I heard Bill Parcells saying Before that. Before the ball was today, snapped, but... false start, number 73 on the offense. Five yards, still first down. Yeah, your quarterback has to be a little feisty. So I think that Steve Walsh could prove his feistiness. But the coach is sick. But the coach is sick. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> but then you're more feisty. Then it's good. I mean, you know, dumping a bucket on a coach is one thing, dumping a bucket on a sick coach. You can get a lot of points for that. <laughs> Not with the coach's family, I don't think. Oh, yeah, they don't care. They're happy to win. Believe me. I'm doing my is, best to no, protect, protect the coach. No, winning is a great deodorant. They'll all be happy. When you're sick, you don't need deodorant. I don't think, I don't think Steve, Wa I, I think it's out of his mind. I could just, he's yeah. looking for his mother and father. Second and 15. The Bears up 35 to 18. Two minutes and 11 seconds left to play as Salisbury's pass is incomplete. Intended for David Palmer. The other tough thing about this is 12 teams get into playoffs. Yep. And you look at the Vikings and you just see them and, and you know the finality of it. 12 teams get into playoffs and 11 of those 12 teams are going to lose the last game they play and that's exactly what Warren Moon was talking about you know this is going to be the last time until training camp when everybody starts even again that I take off this uniform yeah, and you start thinking about it before you put it on as you walk yeah. in there is this going to be the last time or am I going to play next week and the amazing thing these guys have to take a pay cut to play in these games. I mean, these the wild card teams get paid $7,500 per game. Now, if you won the division, they get $12,000 per player. And with the salaries they're getting paid today, they're on one hand the money's going down and the intensity's going up. So I mean, this isn't big dough anymore. I mean, you know, you say, oh well, don't say it's not big dough, but compared to what they get, $7,500 per player. Now the Vikings, because they won their division, they get 1,200. Now next week, the divisional in the divisional game, all the players get 12,000 apiece. You just think about that. Even if you make the minimum salary, you still take a pay cut for this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that's why you know you can say players are just in it for the money or the business or whatever. And I think that this proves that it's not. I think the money goes down and the intensity goes up. And the intensity is about putting on that big ring at the end. Being a champion. Salisbury. That's got to be pass interference. No. Whoa. It was either pass interference or great timing. Danell Wolford got that right arm over there and just knocked that ball out of there. Watch your right arm come. I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah, yeah, the Bears defensive backs as a unit haven't been called very much for pass interference. That ball, that ball hit him right in the face. The Bear fans made the trip. One guy's got a ball. <laughs> this game should have been played outside, though. I mean, it, you know, yeah. Central Division, you know, black and blue, the whole thing, and being played in, inside a dome doesn't make a lot of sense. Salisbury gets it to Antley, who looked up the field before the ball got there. And there's just over two minutes remaining. 
the flag. I believe a timeout, maybe. Holding. I'll get it right in a minute. You know, a lot one, of confusion. Yeah, we talk about the players that are going to be playing their last game, and the Vikings have a coach, Tyrone Willingham. It'll be coaching his last game because he was named the head coach at Stanford University. And Tyrone Willingham is a running back coach here. They're right there. And he didn't intend to go to Stanford this next week, but he can go and start recruiting tomorrow. The NCAA has a rule that you can't recruit while you're still working. So and that's a big disadvantage, not yeah. being able to recruit. Yeah, so he's been able to put a staff together. He's been able to go out to Palo Alto and do some work, but he hasn't been able to recruit and he couldn't start recruiting until the Vikings were out of the playoffs. Red Cashin trotting over to Dave Wanstead now. And whatever it is, he told him it satisfies both of them. You know, Dave Wanstead looks pretty healthy today, though. I mean, yeah, I think does. you can throw the bucket on him. That penalty is declined. It's fourth down. It was a holding penalty. It's declined. There's Jack Del Rio had such a such an outstanding year. Led the team in tackles, the Viking team from his middle linebacker position. The losing just takes everything out. I mean, you could just I mean every everything was just sucked out of Del Rio. Salisbury gets the ball to Jake Reed. Enough for a first down. Two minute warning now. Two minutes left, and the Bears lead it 35 to 18. The Bears 35, Minnesota 18, a minute 54 on the scoreboard clock. The Miller Lite player of the game is Steve Walsh. Deservedly so. He's still trying to find his mother and father. Well, I think with that smile, he's already found them. The heck's that signal mean? Uh, What's that? Uh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there they are. Yeah. There's mom and dad right there. Right there. A victory cigar, maybe. Yeah, no, he was walking around and telling, yeah, my son the quarterback. Salisbury's pass intended for Amp Lee put in Kirby Puckett. The ball is the wrong shape. Well, it's a little too light. I mean, you know, Kirby Puckett could come in and, and hit a bases loaded home run here, and that still wouldn't do the Vikings much they good. They still have to go for two. <laughs> They'd have to go and, and a few more home runs. Yeah. Kirby looks like he could be a Viking, though. Yeah, he does. Salisbury complete to Jake Reed. Fumble. Bears have it. scamper off with it. I don't know that the officials have pointed anything yet. Though. I don't know they have either. Well, Red Cash is going to get up there and do something. You got to point one way or the other, guys. Mangum has the ball down yeah. on the other end. Can't play without the ball. I'm not taking any chances. Mangum doesn't know if he did good or not. Hey, Wanstead does look good today. I, I said winning. Winning's a great deodorant. Yeah. I think winning could be a great antihistamine. I think it could. A and great, they, the great they healer. Did, they did get him. Someone dumped him with a little bucket. Yeah. <laughs> He's happy. It's okay. See, you can throw it on a sick guy. Whoever it was, it was a, it was a wimpy throw, <laughs> and though. And they did it from a distance. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah, from a distance. It was probably a little old bucket, too. Probably the kicker's bucket. Clock continues to run a minute and a half. Raymond Harris, the ball carrier. Yeah, there's a little dampness on the back of the. Well, they jacket. got yeah, yeah, and and they, and they got the back of his hair too, and a jacket, but they didn't get anything down the front. So he's trying to figure. It. There's probably some ice cubes down that down the back of his shirt. But you know, I think he was around Jimmy Johnson so long that it didn't mess up his hair. I know. Well, they just hit the back of his hair. Yeah. 
You know, Danny Green, you look at Danny Green, you can just feel the, the finality of it. You know, that you wake up tomorrow morning, you don't have to go to work, and you want to go to work. You come in for the postseason physical, clean out the locker, and say goodbye till next July. When the day started, that wasn't what you wanted. There's a happy group of overachievers that have been well coached and have done everything they had to do to win. The thing about it is they don't believe they're overachievers. Well, maybe there's a guy right there, Donnell Wolford, that probably should have been in the Pro Bowl. Yep. First road win in the months of December and January since 1987. 17 games. The more important than that, they won and they're going on and they're still in the playoffs. And Steve Walsh is going to take that ball with him. The final score here at the Metrodome is Chicago 35, Minnesota 18. Coming up, it's the NASDAQ stock market postgame report. JB, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy will look at today's NFC and AFC wild card playoff games. That's all coming up next on the NASDAQ stock market postgame report.